This broadcast is under the direction and is copywritten by Champion Sports Radio. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of the audio stream, and any and all other use of the accounts of this broadcast without the direct written consent and permission of Champion Sports Radio is strictly prohibited. All rights are reserved by Champion Sports Radio and ChampionSportsRadio.com. This is a presentation of Champion Sports Radio, your home for championship broadcasts. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, for tonight's 8-6A matchup between the Gophers of Grand Prairie High School and the state's number three ranked team, the defending 6A Division II state champion, your Cedar Hill Longhorns. I'm Bill Howard along with my broadcast partner, Cam Bolin, on a fairly warm, windy night in the bowl that sits down a little bit below the ground in Grand Prairie, Texas, as we're getting set for tonight's matchup between Grand Prairie and Cedar Hill. And Cam, in a few minutes, uh, our listeners will get to hear Coach Joey McGuire from down on the field. But uh, before we take it down to him, Grand Prairie tonight, they come in with only two wins on the year. They're prohibitive underdogs tonight. But Cedar Hill must not look past them in anticipation of the big game with the DeSoto Eagles a week from now. Yeah, these are the type of games that really scare coaches uh, because even if you are the prohibitive favorite, uh, as Cedar Hill is coming in to tonight's contest. Uh, you have to, to take care of business here at the uh, the Gopher Bowl because it would make Grand Prairie season, uh, and this would even probably be a memory for a lot of these kids moving on forward because a lot of Cedar Hill's players are going to go Division One and maybe even further, and what better – uh, what memory would it be to say, hey, I beat that guy my senior year in high school. So uh, they're going to get uh, the best shot from Grand Prairie, and it'll be imperative to, to give 100% effort tonight if you're a Longhorn. We're so glad you're with us on Champion Sports Radio for tonight's game. Uh, when we come back, we'll start the Whirly Ball pregame show. Whirly Ball with two locations to serve you, Plano and Hearst. Life is more fun when you are zipping around in a Whirly Bug. They have the most affordable laser tag in town, and leagues are forming right now. So visit them at whirlyball.info. When we come back, we'll go down on the field and have a chat with head coach Joey McGuire. You're listening to the Cedar Hill Longhorn pregame show on the Champion Sports Radio Network. Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972 851 7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972 851 7888. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball, let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games, zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition, or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforigindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforigindesign.com. Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. 
GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org slash jazz. Many heart conditions can be fixed, but many of us don't know we have a problem until it's too late. On April 2, 2009, Zachary Schraw, a 16-year-old sophomore offensive lineman, died of sudden cardiac arrest, the number one cause of death among student-athletes. Like so many SCA victims, Zach had no heart issues, nor did anyone in his family. If Zach had an echocardiogram, he might have been able to avoid suffering a condition that takes 10,000 of our youth each year. In his memory, Living for Zachary was formed to try and prevent SCA from taking the lives of youth everywhere. Join in the fight today and stop the silent killer of SCA by scheduling your young athlete for an echocardiogram, a procedure that can detect any heart issue with 99% accuracy. For more information, visit www.livingforzachary.org. That's living, the number four, Zachary.org, and let your heart be heard. Stay up on all the latest news about the teams you care about and know when your favorite games are on the air thanks to Champion Sports Radio social media. Either follow at Champion Sports on Twitter or like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio and you will know what time your game starts, who was named Player of the Week, or what your school's alumni are doing in college. That's on Twitter at Champion Sports and facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio. Your home for championship social media. Hey, everybody, this is Chris Daly from LoneStarGridiron.com, the authority on Texas high school football. Quick question, did you play Texas high school football? If you did, it doesn't matter what school, it doesn't matter what year, we want to honor you at Lone Star Gridiron. Go over to LoneStarGridiron.com slash brotherhood and sign up. It's absolutely free, and we can honor you for the part you played in the greatest sport in the greatest state. Are you tired of only spending time as a family huddled around the TV? Would you like to enjoy some culture with your loved ones without breaking the bank? Then let me introduce you to the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. The GDYO provides music education and performance opportunities for musically talented youth, but this is no kid's concert. The GDYO comprises seven different ensembles made up of over 425 talented musicians ages 8 to 18, representing more than 50 communities in North Texas. You won't believe how amazing these ensembles sound until you hear it for yourself. So join them for one of their concerts at the Meyerson Symphony Center or Dallas City Performance Hall. For more information on how to make a donation, as well as a listing of upcoming GDYO concerts, visit gdyo.org. And if you know a talented young musician interested in an unbelievable experience, auditions take place in the spring. Connect with the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and at gdyo.org. Are you looking for a way to promote your business or increase exposure? Do you just need more people to know that you're there? Join the Champion Sports Radio team and advertise during these games. In the last four years, Champion Sports Radio has broadcast over 600 games to more than 3.5 million listeners. And Champion Sports Radio wants to help you use major high school sports to reach thousands of local fans right in your community. Think about it. Die-hard fans just like you tune in each and every week. 
giving your business unparalleled access to the community. It's the perfect way for smaller, individually owned businesses to cultivate a core clientele or expand their already loyal customer base. To secure your prime commercial spot during the broadcast, contact Thomas Lee at Champion Sports Radio by phone at 972-741-0334. That's 972-741-0334 or online at championsportsradio.com. Champion Sports Radio, your home for championship broadcast. Your Cedar Hill Longhorns and Coach, first and foremost, congratulations on a great win one week ago against the Duncanville Panthers at Longhorn Stadium. Thank you. That was big, you know, getting one step closer to uh, qualifying for the playoffs. Um, the way we look at it, uh, we feel like the win tonight puts us in the playoffs uh, no matter what happens from here on out. So uh, it's a big game for us tonight. Uh, you travel over to the Gopher Bowl the last time you were here, of course, uh, the last game of the regular season a year ago, an exciting win uh, over South Grand Prairie that catapulted uh, the Longhorns not only into the playoffs but started a run that ended with your second consecutive state championship. Good memories here about the Gopher Bowl. Oh, no doubt. You know, if, if they give me five more yards on this sideline, this would be my favorite high school place to play, high school stadium to play. It's an incredible venue. Um, you know, sunken down, of course, the bowl, and we've got a great press box, and the way how they have everything set up, it's just beautiful. It's just tight on the sidelines. You know, you wish you had another five yards, and I could say another five yards, this might be the perfect place to play a high school uh, football game. Well, well, the officials and your relationship with those officials uh, comes into play on this field because they can't get away from you, and you can't get away from them. No, we've got a good group tonight. In fact, we have the same group that did the SGP game uh, last year. Uh, so they've had us before. Um, this is a Dallas chapter. You know, our home chapter is Fort Worth, which is a Dallas chapter. It's a really strong chapter. Um, the referee is, has been phenomenal. He does football and basketball, and, and he's really good. This is a good crew to have tonight. You're undefeated, still ranked number three in the state. Uh, behind that that team up north from Allen, right, and uh, some team called Katy yes. that, that, that that we're a little familiar with. How important is it to you, Coach, right now, to not only to be undefeated but but to be ranked in the top five in the state? What does it do for the psyche of your football team? Well, the undefeated kind of takes a life of its own. You know, I remember um, in '06 about this time, six or seven and oh of starting to talk about you know being perfect and. If we can take care of business tonight, you know, that will lead into the discussion a little bit. Not that we need any motivation for our next opponent, but, you know, we'll start talking about that because um, I always talk about undefeated seasons just happen. You can't go in with that being your goal. Um, if you are, you're going to miss it in a hurry because that those things are pretty special whenever you can do that. Coach, tonight's opponent, the Grand Prairie Gophers, struggling a little bit this year. A young football team, you come into tonight, a prohibited favorite. How do you get your football team to stay focused on the task at hand and not look ahead to DeSoto in a week? Well, this is like, you know, it's the first thing we talked about. Um, you know, in the district, when you've got a 17, you get three wins and you're in, it can, tiebreakers can come in if you get three wins. But the way we look at it, um, with if, if we take care of business tonight, then we'll have all the tiebreakers on our side with anybody that could knock us out. So you focus on that. We call it the X game, and it's the X game every year whenever that game is to where you've got to win to get in the playoffs. Um, you know, I want to be the district championship. That's our first goal, but you can't win a state championship without getting in the playoffs. So, you know, that's really – we don't talk about it as that being our first goal, but that's what you got to do to win it all. 41-18 to 18 was the win last week over uh, Duncanville uh, under Coach Reginald Samples. While at Duncanville, his initial year, his first time to come into Longhorn Stadium, uh, you treated your old friend pretty rudely after he jumped on you 12 to nothing. you got to be proud of the way your football team came back. Well, you know, they responded great. We, uh, we um, had an interception, I think, that led to a field goal. Uh, we had a bad snap that led to a um, uh, two-point of safety. Uh, we turned around and um, we uh, 
gave up, we, you know, we missed a tackle and gave up a long touchdown. And, and you know, I, I really, I never, I never felt like, I felt like we were flat. You know, I didn't feel like that we weren't prepared or anything like that or any, the game was too big. I just felt like we were flat. And so, um, you know, we came out, uh, established ourselves, got in the end zone. Uh, we worked all week. We've got a lot of, I, I talked to Bob Wager today at Arlington and Martin, and you and I talked about this at the beginning of the year. We got a lot of tricks up our sleeves and, and special teams, and, and uh, we used some of Bob Wager's tricks uh, to win the game the other night. Coach, as you go forward tonight uh, against Grand Prairie, what, what about Grand Prairie gives you the biggest concern? Is it their team speed or is it their ability to throw the ball downfield? Well, you know, they're about, they're kind of a little bit like us, 50-50 as far as throwing and running. I think they're 51% throwing the football. So our secondary, who is banged up, um, we're one more week out uh, with, with Clark. He's not playing tonight. Michael Clark, the, the commit to uh, SMU. And then Kobe McGarry, we're going to limit him tonight. Um, he won't start the game. Uh, he'll be fine and ready to go against the Soto, but he's got a banged up knee. Hopper extended the other day against Duncanville. Uh, he's braced tonight, and he could go. But we got a couple young safeties that I really want to see. So they're going to get tested tonight throwing the football. I think we can put enough pressure on them up front that it'll make it harder to throw the ball. Uh, but, you know, Gary Bartell is one of the best coaches around. And, and what he does to prepare his teams, you know, this is a team that beat Duncanville last year, you know, right. and, and beat Midlothian last year that was 5-5 five and five and was one win away from trying to get in the playoffs. So we got to make sure we do what we're supposed to do. Coach, you've got to be pleased with uh, your special teams play in the kicking game from from your your place kicker Maverick Montiel oh. and and uh, of course Josh Stewart, your All State punter, doing a whale of a job. But they continue to perform at a very high level. We know Josh is 41.5 uh, yards a game in the punting game. He flips a field, uh, which is huge. And that's a 41.5 net. Then, oh yeah, no doubt. And, and then Maverick has been phenomenal. Now. The one thing, me and Maverick, I love Maverick because you can get on his tail and he takes it very serious. He's more like a regular football player than a kicker. <laughs> and um, so he takes it real serious. So that's been really good. Uh, Maverick's been a gamer. I've been really on him to practice better. And it's not that he's not practicing, but he gets a little loosey-goosey like a kicker does. And then for some reason, he'll get in the game and just get locked in. And So we're challenging him to do that throughout everything. He'll only get better. Coach, last question concerns your offensive line tonight. Uh, your offensive line play hasn't been at, at as a consistent a level right. as, as you want. Anything in store for us tonight on the offensive line change-wise? Well, you know, one of the funniest things about being in Cedar Hill, Texas, and, and the success we've had, this is one of the main things, unselfish players that care more about the team than, the, than their selves. Uh, Antoine Yarbrough came up after the um, – Duncanville game, and he has been an O-line, D-line guy in the past. He said, Coach, I, I want to help the offensive line. He's starting tonight at right guard. Uh, Coffee is, uh, Cliffy Coffee is going to get, who is a nose guard, who's going to get some uh, play at right guard, uh, left guard. So these guys are trying to make us better. That's, that's the last tweak. Besides just continuing to grow as a football team, that's the last tweak we need to really take off and do what I think we can do. Well, that starts tonight, Coach, against the Grand Prairie Gophers. Best of luck to you. We'll see you on the field at Longhorn Stadium next week before the key matchup with DeSoto. Yes, sir. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games. Zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition. Or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. 
Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org jazz. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforidgindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforidgindesign.com. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 4 million brain injuries occur every year due to sports in the U.S. They also estimate that 70% of concussions go unreported. Not identifying concussions early can be devastating, especially if the athlete continues to play with symptoms. Catching hard hits fast is critical, and that's why you need the Shockbox Helmet Impact Sensor. The Shockbox is a small sensor that easily attaches to most football, lacrosse, and hockey helmets and instantly sends a signal to a smartphone on the sidelines when the player has taken a hard hit that puts them at higher risk for injury. The free app receives data from the sensor, displays information about the impact, and even walks the user through a concussion assessment. The app also logs symptom and impact data for future medical use. Visit ShockboxDFW.com to learn more about the Shockbox Impact Alert Sensor and determine if it is the right option for your child. Be warned instantly when a player has a experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. ShockboxDFW.com. Back at Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, we are just minutes away from tonight's kickoff between the Cedar Hill Longhorns and the Grand Prairie Gophers. The Gophers tonight will be in their blue jerseys with double-striped white shoulders, blue pants with white stripes down the side. They will be in their blue helmets with the G for Grand Prairie on the side. Tonight, your Cedar Hill Longhorns will be in their white jerseys trimmed in red and black numerals. They'll be in their red pants with red helmets with the familiar horns scripted on the side in for a good one tonight from grand prairie i'm glad you're with us on the champion sports radio cedar hill comes in tonight with an offense ranked number 19 in the area cam a little unusual for the longhorns they're averaging 405.2 yards a game which is certainly nothing to sneeze at but their strength this year statistically lies on the defensive side they're second in the area in run defense in all of dallas fort worth uh, among the 6a schools they're giving up only a total of run and pass of 250 yards a game. In the and and as far as the rushing defense, it's only 90 yards a game and passing a, at 161 uh, yards per game. So the defense has been more than stout and has also forced uh, a litany of turnovers, which has led to a lot a lot of easy opportunities to add uh, points and uh, scores for the Cedar Hill Longhorn team. So. I look for the Horns to improve on that ranking as we continue uh, throughout district play, and then things get to kind of ramp up, if you will, uh, next week with DeSoto. Well, the DeSoto Eagles are a week away, but right now the Cedar Hill Longhorns have to be faced with taking care of business against the Grand Prairie Gophers. When we come back, we'll be set for tonight's kickoff. Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio will be back in a moment. Many heart conditions can be fixed, but many of us don't know we have a problem until it's too late. On April 2nd, 2009, Zachary Schraw, a 16-year-old sophomore offensive lineman, died of sudden cardiac arrest. 
the number one cause of death among student athletes. Like so many SCA victims, Zach had no heart issues, nor did anyone in his family. If Zach had an echocardiogram, he might have been able to avoid suffering a condition that takes 10,000 of our youth each year. In his memory, Living for Zachary was formed to try and prevent SCA from taking the lives of youth everywhere. Join in the fight today and stop the silent killer of SCA by scheduling your young athlete for an echocardiogram, a procedure that can detect any heart issue with 99% accuracy. For more information, visit www.livingforzachary.org. That's living, the number four, Zachary.org, and let your heart be heard. Back at the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, we're set to go. The Grand Prairie Gophers will be kicking off from right to left on your radio dial, and it'll be number 14, Juan Correa, set to do the kicking. Longhorns with two receivers back in return formation, number 34, Robert Reitzel, and he's joined back there, I believe that's number 20, Miracle Broussard, but we'll have to get you that number when we can see uh, the Re return man on the far side a little bit better. Correa set to kick off. We're ready to get underway. Thanks for being with us on Champion Sports Radio and an onside kick by Grand Prairie right off the top. And they recovered at the 40 down to the Cedar Hill 36-yard line. And it's number eight, Bakari Middleton, the sophomore quarterback, the backup that came up with the recovery. And Cedar Hill, Cam, gets a little dose of their own medicine. A week ago, they did it to Duncanville twice. And Coach McGuire said he had a couple tricks up his sleeve. Well, Coach Bartell says, hey, I got one for you. Uh, we got some up ours as well. A uh, great call to start off the game uh, against Coach Bartell. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Grand Prairie go for it on every fourth down and uh, onside kick every opportunity that they had. They'll mark the ball back at the 44-yard line of Cedar Hill. Gophers moving from right to left. The quarterback, number 13, Joe Reyes, the junior. Twin receivers to the left, one to the right. On first down, play action pass. Reyes going deep downfield, well covered by the Longhorns, and it's incomplete. The coverage out there by number six, Eric Sutton. Ball intended for number two, Adriel Bradshaw, the senior wide receiver. That'll make it second and ten, and you're right, Cam. Right off the bat, Gary Bartell lets Cedar Hill know that, hey, we got not a lot to lose tonight. We're going to take our chances. Yeah, and a great call by the offensive coordinator they're immediately attacking uh, the cornerback and secondary of Cedar Hill, not intimidated at all by this pass defense. Abraham Newsom and Jordan McGuire, the running backs on either side of Reyes, and we're going to get a flag and an illegal substitution penalty against the Gophers as the Gophers broke the huddle with 12 on the field, and that's going to back them up five. And that's the type of thing you can't have happen as an underdog. You need to play a perfect game. They had a great start with the onside kick and recovery, but now they're behind schedule on down and distance with the long second and 15. Chris Jeter comes to the near side of the field on the left, one receiver to the right. Reyes in the shotgun, backs on either side. Direct snap to Reyes. They hand it off inside to number 22, who Abraham Newsom, and he's going to be dropped for a yard loss, and the ball has quickly moved from the Cedar Hill 45 back on the side of the field for Grand Prairie. They're at their own 49. Now they look at a third down and 17. They come in with wide receivers, twins to the left. It's going to be number eight, Bakari Middleton, the recoverer of the onside kick. He's joined out there by number two, Adriel Bradshaw. Wide to the right in the far side of the field, number 10, Chris Jeter. Reyes, the quarterback, breaks the huddle. Now trips come to the left. Number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, also joining the twin receivers. Direct snap to Reyes. He'll throw. Here comes the rush. Reyes gets away to the 50, 45, 40, and he's taken down at the 38-yard line. A pickup of 13 yards. He'll be four yards short of the first down. Good coverage downfield, Cam, for the Longhorn defensive backs, but a little breakdown in containment. Yeah, and we don't see any mass substitutions, and just as we thought, Grand Prairie's going to go uh, for this fourth and short and see if they're able to uh, convert. Well, maybe not fourth and short, but fourth and manageable. And very smart decision by the quarterback not throwing in the coverage 
and scrambling for as many yards as he could to make this fourth and manageable. Fourth down and manageable will be about four yards. Make it five. Direct snap to Reyes on fourth and five. Play action pass. Throws the out. Got a man ball complete up at the 30-yard line. It's number seven, Peyton Westmoreland. And the first fourth down attempt for Grand Prairie of the night is converted. And Grand Prairie picks up a first down at the Cedar Hill 30. 10-24 to go in Grand Prairie at the Gopher Bowl. The undefeated number three ranked team in the state. And the defending Division II 6A state champion Cedar Hill Longhorns against the Grand Prairie Gophers. Gophers recover the onside kick to start the game. They've now moved that ball into Cedar Hill territory at the 30-yard line where they have a first down and 10, moving from right to left. One back, Newsom. He gets the inside handoff. He gets over the 30 across the 25 and down to the 24. And correction, that's a running back number 24, Jordan McGuire on that carry as Newsom checks into the game now, but it was McGuire picking up five yards. Jordan McGuire, no kin as far as we know <laughs> can to uh, the Cedar Hill head coach, Joey McGuire. Although Joey does have his own young son that plays on the varsity, number 26, Garrett McGuire. Second and five from the 25, 9.49 to go in the first, no score, Grand Prairie. Knocking on Cedar Hill's door. Direct snap to Reyes. Inside handoff to McGuire. The 25 across the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. They'll pick up seven, and that'll be enough for another Grand Prairie first down. And right away, you get the feeling, Cam, that Grand Prairie has decided that if Cedar Hill's looking past them to DeSoto next week, that could be a mistake. Yeah, it definitely would be a mistake. Something that we would hope would not happen, especially since Cedar Hill came out flat last week in a rivalry game against Duncanville, a team that had kind of been struggling coming in. Uh, so we would hope that, you know, they kind of learned the lesson from last week, but we will find out quickly if that is the case. First and 10 from the 18, Reyes in the shotgun, backs on either side, direct snap. They hand it off to Abraham. He's going to be taken down after a gain of only a yard. Longhorns do a good job, and it's number 14 for the Horns. Josh Newman coming up from his cornerback position to make the tackle. He's joined there by number four, Xavier Hall. It's going to be second down and nine from the 17. Gophers on their initial possession, the initial possession of the game, moving from right to left. 8.39 to go in the first, no score from Grand Prairie. Other games to keep an eye on tonight, South Grand Prairie taking on DeSoto. A game that when we get a score, we will pass that on. From the left hash mark, moving from right to left, the Gophers looking at second and nine from the Cedar Hill 17. Motion across the formation from left to right. Reyes rolls to the right, throws the ball out in the flat. Got a man, ball knocked away. Excellent defensive play as the ball was intended there for number seven, Peyton Westmoreland. But the Longhorn coverage, a good job out there by a number, I believe that's 25, Michael Clark. The free safety, who we understood may not play tonight. No, that was uh, actually 35 uh, in his stead, uh, a senior, Marcus Hooks. Ah, very good, Marcus Hooks. We had gotten the word that Michael Clark may not be available tonight, and uh, Cam's young eyes better than my old eyes picking that up. Makes it a third down and nine from the 17. They've already has Grand Prairie converted one third down and one fourth down on this drive. Abraham and McGuire on either side of Reyes in the shotgun on third down. They hand it off inside. Longhorn's going to take McGuire down back at the 24-yard line. Holy moly, number seven, Dimitri Moore. They used to refer to him as Richard's little brother, but not anymore. He's making a name for himself. He's joined there by Devin Lamp, the defensive end, and on fourth down, and third down and nine, rather, a five-yard loss for McGuire, and that's going to set up a 39-yard field goal attempt for Juan Correa, the senior kicker. And let me tell you, Juan's got the leg to handle this one. The hole will be by number five, Reggie Williams, the sophomore. This will be from the left hash mark with a slight wind at his back. Correa from 39 yards hits it high in a line drive that's going to be no good. The ball goes off to the left. A miss hit, not a very good snap and hold either for Correa there. Yeah, I think uh, Correa had the double clutch on his kick a little bit uh, as his, his windup uh, was uh, altered because he had to double clutch due to the mishandling of a high snap. 
and the snap was uh, was down late. It was just a, a bit of a cluster there uh, for the kicker, and unfortunately for Grand Br uh, Prairie, uh, they were not able to take advantage of the onside kick. Longhorns will take over first and 10 for their first possession on their own 22 on the right. Hash mark Davis with twins to the left and one to the right, hands it off inside to the running back who gets across the 25 down to the 27 yard and it's Mark's Foreman, the junior running back. He'll pick up five on the play, make it second down. Kagan Williams and Foreman are the running backs. Now Williams goes wide to the left, twin receivers for the Longhorns come wide to the right. H back strong to the right. Davis on second down. Jet formation. They run the jet sweep to Williams. Coming from right to left across the 30. 35 makes one man miss at the 40. Up to the 42, 43. All the way across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Give Kagan Williams 20 yards on the jet sweep from the left to the right. And very patient run by Kagan. Uh, really good blocking there on the edge uh, by the offensive line of Cedar Hill. Uh, allowing the big run by the young running back. Parker Cup comes strong to the right as the tight end, forming the running back behind Davis. Josh Stewart and Cameron Buckley, the wide receivers, come wide to the left. From the right hash mark, Longhorns move from left to right. 6.46 to go, no score in the first quarter. Direct snap to Davis, inside handoff to Kagan Williams, coming right to the 45, up across midfield and into Grand Prairie territory at the 49. It was actually Marquise Foreman, not Kagan Williams, on that carry. That's going to be a gain of another five yards and second down and five for the Longhorns. And one of the benefits uh, that Coach McGuire has is having ball carriers like Marquise Foreman and Kagan Williams so he doesn't have to tire either one of them out by uh, giving them too many carries, and that really has an effect on the defense as the game wears on. Twins to the left, one to the right. Williams the running back behind Davis on second, and let's make it six. Inside handoff to Kagan coming right to the 50, and he's knocked down at the 47-yard line on a nice tackle by number 44, Victor Rangel, the junior defensive back for Grand Prairie. Yeah, and Kagan uh, has really good balance on that particular play, I think, uh, he really just tried to or had to protect the football as it looked like the defender tackled the football as opposed to the runner and had a little bit of success. So Kagan uh, did a good job of just making sure he secured the ball and did not fumble on that carry. Jalen Sims and Charleston Rambo come wide to the right, Buckley wide to the left, Williams the setback to the left of Davis on third down and four. Motion across the formation by Jalen Sims, Davis will throw. Straight back, throws a stop route, got Josh Stewart, open at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, and all the way down to the 13-yard line. A gain of 34 yards, a little stop route as they brought Josh Stewart in and put him at the tight end position, really threw Grand Prairie's defense off a a little bit, Cam. Yeah, and that's something that Cedar Hill showed for the first time last week, but they didn't throw Stewart the ball. This time, through Stewart was the primary receiver. Great read and accurate throw by Avery Davis, and Stewart able to take advantage on the seam route. Kagan Williams and I believe it's Foreman on either side of Davis from the left hash mark. First and 10 from the 13. Davis will throw straight back in the pocket. Look and look and excellent production. Throws the ball down the middle. Ball caught in the end zone. Touchdown Cameron Buckley. And man, let me tell you, Avery Davis took a chance. He threaded the needle a small window, but he got it through. Yeah, that, um, that's one where it's like, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. Oh. yes. Longhorns oh had two receivers in the same area, which brought two defensive backs to the party. But uh, a great throw by Avery Davis. He zipped it into the right front corner of the end zone. Cameron Buckley hauled it in with 444 to go in the first. Longhorns lead 6-0. And Maverick Montiel is on for the extra point, but the Longhorns going to go for two. They run the option. Inside goes Number 10, Jalen Sims, and he stops short. There's a flag down on the play. We'll have to wait and see what the flag is. Jalen Sims faked the pitch to the kicker, Montiel, who uh, had lined up behind him. And the Longhorns continue to try those uh, Bob Weger two-point conversions. And <laughs> Coach McGuire and I always have a good time with it. Let's see what the penalty flag is. I think he does this just to get to you, Bill. I think he does. I think he does it just for me. It is offsides against Grand Prairie. So uh, this time, lo and behold, maybe Jalen Sims will go down on one knee and let Maverick Montiel boot this extra point through. Oh, he's even so, closer now. So, so McGuire and I don't have to argue tomorrow morning <laughs> over film. 
Maverick Montiel set for the extra point. Now a little bit closer out of the hole of Jalen Sims. Garrett McGuire's snap is perfect. The kick is up, and it is good. 444 to go in the first quarter. Longhorn strike first. Cedar Hill 7, Grand Prairie nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Whirly Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games. Zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition. Or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. Back in Grand Prairie, Texas, the Cedar Hill Longhorns go 80, excuse me, 72 yards in nine plays. It's capped by a 13-yard touchdown pass from Avery Davis to Cameron Buckley to give the Longhorns a 7-0 lead. Maverick Montiel set to kick off twin receivers back deep for the Gophers. Montiel hits a high pooch kick. It's going to be fair caught by Grand Prairie at their own 25-yard line, taken in by number eight, Bakari Middleton. And that's where quarterback Joe Reyes and the Grand Prairie offense will come out on the field for the second time. Longhorns come into tonight a perfect snow in District 8 6A. A win tonight for the Cedar Hill Longhorns, at least a playoff berth. But you know the Cedar Hill Longhorns have much bigger plans than simply qualifying for the playoffs. But it's, as Joey McGuire said in his pregame show, the first step in the process. Longhorns off to a good start. They lead 7 0, 444 to go. Gophers moving from right to left. Reyes has. Twins in the backfield, and now the uh, a little bit of a change. They're coming in with Bakari Middleton, the sophomore quarterback. So Middleton in the shotgun, backs on either side, inside handoff to McGuire. He gets up across the 28, close to the 29-yard line. Give him about four on the carry, make it second and six. And uh, Cam, we get a look, uh, our first look tonight at the Grand Prairie sophomore quarterback, Bakari Middleton. And uh, Middleton, a uh, guy that's a little bit more fleet of foot, uh, arm not as strong. And I'm pretty sure he'll uh, probably see a few read option plays, uh, especially after Cedar Hill struggled with that a little bit last week against Duncanville. What a great opportunity for the sophomore to get snaps against a team, uh, a state championship team like Cedar Hill. Backs on to Middleton from the right hash mark, moving from right to left, direct snap to Middleton, inside handoff first back through. And I believe that was number seven on the carry. We'll have to wait to see when he hops up. No, actually it was number four, Broderick Green, a senior running back. He's going to get across the 30 and down to the 31-yard line. It's going to leave him four yards short of the Grand Prairie first down. So the Gophers looking at third down and four from the Cedar Hill 31-yard line. 3.35 to go in the first clock. Runs Longhorns lead 7-0. Right to left, play clock down to 20. Little confusion it looks like on the Grand Prairie sideline, but they got the play in now. Gophers will send... One receiver wide to the left, now in at running back, is number 22, Abraham Newsom. He's joined back there by number four, Broderick Green. Direct snap, play action pass. Quarterback's going to try to pull it down and run, but he's taken down back at the 24-yard line for a loss of seven. Longhorns get the sack, and it's number seven, Demetri Moore. We've called his name uh a couple of times already tonight, and he makes the play there along with number 53, Jalen Penton, the defense, the senior defensive end. And the Penton has had a, a tremendous season uh, thus far, really done a great job of applying pressure, hasn't always been able to uh, uh, reap the benefits and the rewards, but he's applied a lot of pressure, so it's great to see that pay off. Joe Reyes in punt formation. He stands at his own 10-yard line. Got to watch the fake. The quarterback's the punter. Malik Orr and Jalen Sims back deep. They stand on their own 40. There's the snap, rugby-style kick. He gets it away end over end. Ball's going to be caught at the 50, up to the 45, and down to the 43-yard line of the Grand Prairie Gophers goes number two, Malik Orr, and that'll give the Longhorns excellent field position with 2.14 to go in the first. They lead three to nothing. And 
for the first time tonight, the scat back Malik Orr gets his hands on the ball. The Canterbury Episcopal School transfer coming on over from uh, the private school realm into Cedar Hill and a big uh, coup for Joey McGuire and the Longhorn staff to get that transfer in. From the right, hash mark moving from left to right. Davis is in the shotgun, forming the running back to his right. Twin receivers to the left are Buckley and Williams. One receiver to the right is Stewart on first down. Davis will throw. Straight back in the pocket. Great protection. He overthrows it, and the ball's almost intercepted. It was intended for Kagan Williams on a crossing route, but it was number five, Reggie Williams. Cam, he came within a hair of uh, a, an Avery Davis interception right there. Yeah, I think Davis just aimed that one a little bit, and that caused him to overshoot his target. Um, luckily for Cedar Hill, though, it fell at the feet uh, of the safety, uh, preventing an interception. Richie Washington, number 28, the running back, a heralded running back, is making his first appearance in the game tonight. He's in the full house formation as the eye back behind Davis. Williams and Foreman to the left or the right. On second down, direct snap. They hand it off inside to Richie, his first carry of the year. He's going to be pulled down back at the 46-yard line. Going to be a loss of three. Not the beginning that Richie was looking for, but the Cedar Hill Longhorns feel pretty good about him. But Richie gets up limping a little bit, and he's coming off the field. And that's got to be a little bit of a concern for the Longhorn coaching staff. Looked like he may have gotten bent back a little bit, Cam, on that tackle. Yeah, not, not a horse collar, but uh, the defender did uh, pull him back, but he wrapped him up around the waist and kind of hook slid a little bit. Uh, got a little, a little bit of uh, Ricky's legs. Hopefully he's able to shake it off. Uh, and stretch out a little bit. Third and 12 from the 45. Twins to the left. Twins to the right for the Longhorns. Forming the running back behind Davis in the shotgun. Davis will throw. Straight back in the pocket. Excellent protection. Avery still looking. Now he's throwing the ball down the middle. Ball's incomplete. Off the hands of number 13, Cameron Buckley, down at the 30-yard line of Grand Prairie. And that was just a, a miss by Avery Davis. But there is a flag down on the play. And let's see what that flag is, Cam. Ah, it's holding against Cedar Hill. Grand Prairie obviously going to decline that penalty, and that means Josh Stewart from his own 45-yard line is where the ball will be snapped. Josh Stewart, the punter, coming on. He's averaging a net of 41.1 yards per kick, a fantastic net average for the All-State kicker. He stands on his own 41-yard line. Ball to be snapped from the middle of the field. 112 to go in the first. Longhorns forced to punt, but they do lead seven to nothing. Stewart now getting everything set, but before he can, Longhorns are going to have to take a timeout, and so will we. Cedar Hill seven, Grand Prairie nothing. Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. Back in a moment. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. Back at the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, the Cedar Hill Longhorns with 1.12 to go in the first period lead the Grand Prairie Gophers 7-0, but the Gophers' defense stiffened, and the Longhorns now forced a punt. It'll be Josh Stewart standing back on his own 40-yard line to receive the snap from Garrett McGuire. Back deep for Grand Prairie, number two, Adriel Bradshaw. He stands on his own 10-yard line waiting the kick from the All-State kicker, Stewart, and it's a fake. Kagan Williams gets it up to the 40-yard line, and he's tackled immediately. Grand Prairie ready for that. Only a gain of three yards, nowhere near enough for a first down. The direct snap to Kagan Williams, uh, the up back, and Grand Prairie ready for that, takes him down immediately. And right now, you think Grand Prairie Gophers really – Pretty much ready, Cam, for anything that Cedar Hill has thrown at them outside of a touchdown pass from Avery Davis to Cam Buckley. Yeah, and uh, just to revisit the third down play, Grand Prairie really had tremendous coverage. There was nowhere for Avery Davis to go with the football. Let's see if Grand Prairie can continue to, this high level of play throughout the football game. Twins to the left, one to the right from their own 41. 
Reyes back in at quarterback. He throws the stop route out to the left. The ball's complete up to the 46-yard line to number seven, Peyton Westmoreland. That'll be enough for a six-yard gain. Second down and four, as we said, back in at quarterback now is the junior number 13, Joe Reyes. And you see the difference in the play calling as soon as Reyes comes in. A nice out route to his receiver in the open field from the young, strong arm quarterback. Shadrian Williams is in at wide receiver for the Gophers. He goes wide to the right. Coming wide to the left is Wes Moreland in the slot. He's joined out by Chris Jeter, number 10, who comes farther to the right. And number eight, Bakari Middleton, as they go stack trip receivers to the left. One running back to the right of Reyes. On second and four, inside handoff to McGuire, but the Longhorn defense penetrates and drops him back at the 45-yard line. It was big number 99, Joseph Lamott, the 265-pound nose guard that, that made that penetration and drop of a loss. And that's going to bring us to the conclusion of the first quarter. At the end of one quarter of play in the Gopher Bowl, our score, the Cedar Hill Longhorn 7. The Grand Prairie Gophers nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. All the latest news about the teams you care about and know when your favorite games are on the air thanks to Champion Sports Radio social media. Either follow at Champion Sports on Twitter or like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash champion sports radio and you will know what time your game starts, who was named player of the week, or what your school's alumni are doing in college. That's on Twitter at Champion Sports and facebook.com slash champion sports radio. Your home for championship social media. Back at the Gopher Bowl, we're set to begin the second period of play. The Cedar Hill Longhorns leading the Grand Prairie Gophers seven to nothing. As we resume play, the Gophers in possession of the ball will now be moving from left to right. They're at their own 45 yard line. They face a second down and six. Reyes, the quarterback, McGuire, the running back to his left. One receiver to the short side of the field to the left, trips to the wide side of the field to the right. Direct snap to Reyes. Reyes will throw, three-step drop, throwing the fade route, deep down. Balls come back, caught and dropped. Oh, they had a back shoulder fade working. Longhorns had it pretty well covered, but a great maneuver by number 26, Shadrian Williams, to come back and get it, Cam, but then he came back and got it and dropped it. Yeah, it had a little bit of Butterfingers right there. I feel bad for it. I think he got excited uh, that time, but he did a tremendous job of playing the football. Fourth down and six. When we came back, the uh, scoreboard actually said it was second down and six, but now both the yard marker and the scoreboard, fourth and six, and they're going again from the 45, but Reyes is going to quick kick from his shotgun formation. He kicks the ball, and it gets a Grand Prairie roll inside the 15 inside the 10 and all the way back to the Cedar Hill nine yard line. That is a nice 46 yard punt with no return on the quick kick by the quarterback, number 13, Joe Reyes. So the Longhorns will take over first down and 10 from their nine yard line. And the first score of the night can is in uh, on the DeSoto South Grand Prairie game in DeSoto. DeSoto up by a score of 14 to three. Uh, playing host at Eagle Stadium. Uh, strangely enough, DeSoto has not won a home game, yet both of their wins have come away from home. First down and 10 from the nine for the Longhorns, moving from right to left. Davis inside handoff to Kagan Williams, 10, 15, 20, and it's coming back as he gets across the 20 to the 21 for a gain of 12, but that's going to come back. It's going to be a hold against Cedar Hill in the interior line, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you know, Kagan's thinking, man, I thought we were past that. That happened to him time and time again. So it's number 68, I believe, Dwight Brown, if I heard the number correctly. Can't see uh, the number out there, but it may not be 68 because he may not be the guy in the game. But either way, the Longhorns get flagged and move back half the distance to the four and a half yard line, making it first and 16. Davis in the shotgun, twins to the right, one to the left. 
They move from right to left. Davis throws the quick screen outside. Got a man 15, 20, 25, and all the way up to the 29-yard line on the quick bubble screen is Charleston Rambo. And that wasn't really even the bubble screen. They just stood up and threw the ball to him because he had a little cushion. Yeah, it's one of those plays where it may have been a check at the line by the quarterback because you see the soft coverage being played by the DBs. Just throw it to your playmaker and let him make plays. Great job by Rambo on the open field. First down and 10 from the 29, moving from right to left. Davis Davis inside, handoff is fake. Davis rolls out, throws it outside to Malik Orr at the 30, 35, and he's run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Give him nine on the play, make it second and one, and there's that quarterback option play. Davis puts it in the belly of the running back. He didn't like that. He pulled it out. He started to run. He didn't like that. He pulled up, found Malik Orr in the left flat for a gain of nine. And this uh, that's the running play and the option without the um, the the, the – the chance and liability of a possible fumble. On first down, they throw it out to Rambo again to the 40, breaks a tackle, and he's up to the 43-yard line. Correction, that was not first down, but second and two. But again, they stand up and throw the quick ball to Rambo. He takes it up for five to the 43-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a Cedar Hill Longhorn first down. And the NASCAR now starting to roll a little bit. Longhorn's picking up the pace. Foreman and Williams, the running backs on either side of Davis. From the right hash mark, Longhorn's move from right to left. Twin receivers to the left in tight. Sweet play coming with Foreman. He's going to try to turn the corner. He does it to 45 midfield, 45, 40, 35, 30. Breaks the tackle, cuts back to the inside, 25. He's all the way down to the 20-yard line before Marquise Foreman is brought down and there are flags all over the field. So this one's probably going to be coming back. I count three of them. Yeah, and I think. You know, we normally try to argue with the refs a little bit, but if it's three of them, I mean, hey, what can we say? Just go ahead and, and line back up. You probably did it if three people saw it. Well, there is number 79 for the Longhorns. Uh, Cyric Ransom coming out of the game. He's replaced in there by 68 Dwight Brown, and this one does look like it's coming back, and that's too bad because it's going to wipe out a 37-yard run on a sweep to the left if, in fact, the play is nullified, and it appears to be at this time. Uh, looks like uh, it's, it's been raining flags on the field. I'm counting three of them out there. So there was, there was plenty to be seen by the officials. Let's hear what the call is. And we'll have to do that after they confer for yet uh, a third time. They want to make sure they get this right, Ken. Yeah, God forbid <laughs> there's a mistake made. All right, 10-16 to go, <laughs> waiting else. for the officials' call. Longhorns leading 7-0, 10-16 to go here in the first half. Maybe they also have a different penalty. Here's the officials' call. Okay, let's get the calculator and the abacus out, and I'll take off my shoes and socks, and we'll try to count this one up, Cam. It's going to go from the 42-yard line of Cedar Hill. They'll go back 10 to the 32, and if my math's good, they'll move it up 15, so it should end up at the 47 when all's said and done. So oh, oh, look at that. Boy, boy, all that education mom and dad paid for did something. And you, you're also a DISD I'll graduate as well, that right, That is exactly. That's where you learn that good math, baby. <laughs> okay, so when the players will be on their own 48, first down and 10. And with 10-16 to go in the first and the Longhorns leading 7 nothing, Longhorns go empty. Twins to the right, twins to the left, tight end strong to the left, Davis alone in the backfield. Avery looks over the Grand Prairie defense, now motion across the formation, play action pass on the jet sweep. They're throwing a ball downfield, got a man wide open, Stewart at the 30, and he's brought down there. They, they fake the jet sweep coming from left to right and snuck Josh Stewart down the left sideline where he is finally brought down at the 31. That's going to be a 21-yard gain and a first down for Cedar Hill. And they snuck him in at tight end again responsibility of the linebacker can't cover him with a linebacker right and he wouldn't be able to cover him regardless if it was a play action or not twins to the right one to the left inside handoff to four uh kagan williams 25 breaks a tackle at the 20 breaks a tackle at the 15 and gets all the way down to the 13 yard line a gain of 18 yards on an inside running play davis handing it off to kagan williams and the longhorns seem to have found something now avery davis coming over to the sideline he's going to come 
come out of the game. Longhorn's going to go a little wildcat now, and that usually means Kagan Williams will be taking the snap from center. It's first down and 10 Longhorns. They're on the 12-yard line, but before they can snap the ball, Cedar Hill decides to take a timeout. With 9.22 to go in the first, Longhorn 7, Grand Prairie nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforigindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforigindesign.com. Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution. Back a little quicker than we anticipated. The officials get the players back on the field and the Longhorns looking at a first down and 10 from the 12-yard line of Grand Prairie. Moving from right to left. Motion across the formation. Davis going to throw it. Now he's going to pull it down and keep it to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown! Avery Davis on a quarterback keeper. 12 yards. And the Cedar Hill Longhorns extend their lead to 13 to nothing. And the magic man, Avery Davis, picks up his feet. A lot of movement before the ball was snapped as far as motion goes for the Longhorns, all, all of it legal. But once they got set, Avery Davis runs the quarterback keeper around the right side, cuts it up through the middle, and it's 13 to nothing pending the extra point attempt from Maverick Montiel. The snap from McGuire, the hold by Sims. Montiel's kick is up. And it is good with 9.14 to go in the first half. Cedar Hill 14. The Grand Prairie Gophers 0. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 4 million brain injuries occur every year due to sports in the U.S. They also estimate that 70% of concussions go unreported. Not identifying concussions early can be devastating, especially if the athlete continues to play with symptoms. Catching hard hits fast is critical, and that's why you need the Shockbox Helmet Impact Sensor. The Shockbox is a small sensor that easily attaches to most football, lacrosse, and hockey helmets and instantly sends a signal to a smartphone on the sidelines when the player has taken a hard hit that puts them at higher risk for injury. The free app receives data from the sensor, displays information about the impact, and even walks the user through a concussion assessment. The app also logs symptom and impact data for future medical use. Visit ShockboxDFW.com to learn more about the Shockbox Impact Alert Sensor and determine if it is the right option for your child. Be warned instantly when a player has experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. ShockboxDFW.com. Back at the Gopher Bowl, the Longhorns go 91 yards on eight plays, capped by a 12-yard touchdown run by Avery Davis. They're set to kick off down. It's a pooch kick from Montiel. It's going to be fair caught at the 26-yard line by number eight, McCarty Middleton. And that's where Grand Prairie will start this drive, first down and 10 from their own 26-yard line. And I tell you, great drive right there by the Cedar Hill Longhorns cam as they overcame a couple of penalties. Uh, they overcame a great uh, quick kick by Reyes where the drive started at their own nine-yard line. They hit big passes. They made big runs, and it was culminated by the magic man, Avery Davis, a 12-yard touchdown run. Yeah, Avery Davis has shown a lot of great leadership, especially with his ability to make plays when a lot of things weren't there. Uh, looks like we do have a score update. Uh, Midlothian at Duncanville. Midlothian leading early. 10 nothing. All right. Here go the Gophers moving from left to right from the left hash mark. Inside handoff from Middleton goes to Abraham, and he gets across the 30 and down to the 31-yard line. Abraham Newsom, the running back. He's going to pick up five on the play, make it second down and five. And there's one thing that Grand Prairie has been able to do, albeit not consistently, they have been able to open up some running lanes against this Cedar Hill Longhorn defense. And, of course, the Longhorns have waiting great running teams in the DeSoto Eagles, the South Grand Prairie Warriors, and finally Mansfield High, who uh, really runs the ball well. Second down and six from the 31. Ball in the middle of the field moving from left to right. Bacardi Middleton, the sophomore's in at quarterback. 
inside handoff first back through is McGuire, and he's taken down right at the line of scrimmage. And I'm telling you, he's having a whale of a game right now. Devin Raider and Dimitri Moore, the linebackers for the Longhorns, really laying the wood on those tackles. That's going to make it third down and six from the 31. As we go inside, 8-10 to go in the first half. Longhorns 14, Grand Prairie nothing. And uh, also, Javantes Johnson uh, filling in at linebacker. I've seen him make a couple plays as well. And if your linebackers are flying around like that, uh, you really have to give big ups to the defensive linemen because that means they're keeping the offensive line off of those linebackers. Middleton in the shotgun, trips to the left, one to the right. Longhorn showing blitz on third and six, and here they come. Middleton trying to pull it down, and he does to the 30, 35, up to the 38-yard line, and that's going to be enough for a Grand Prairie first down and a tip of the cap to number eight, Bakari Middleton. The, the, he did not let the pressure from the blitz of Cedar Hill get to him. He stepped out of harm's way, took the ball up the left hash mark all the way to the 38-yard line, a gain of seven and enough for a Grand Prairie first down. Yeah, and uh, Robert Thomas got his helmet ripped off in front of the official. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it looked like there was a, a possibly legal hands to the face that may have been missed. 7.13 to go, and the clock runs here in the first half. Longhorns lead 14 to nothing. Number two, Adriel Bradshaw comes wide to the right. Number seven, Peyton Westmoreland to the left. Middleton in the shotgun. Missed handoff in the backfield. Middleton going to have to keep it himself around the right side. He's going to pick up two to the 40 before the Longhorns. Dimitri Moore again in on another tackle. Yeah, Moore has really been everywhere so far tonight. Uh, good to see. Looks like he's maybe back at 100% for the first time since the early part of the year as he uh, had – uh, missed uh, a couple contests uh, with the injuries, but now he's really flying around playing like that guy we saw uh, to start the season. Bradshaw comes wide to the right. Westmoreland wide to the left. Backs on either side of Bakari Middleton in the shotgun. Direct snap to Middleton. In the handoff back through is Newsom. He's going to get across the 40 out to the 43, give him three yards, and Grand Prairie going to be looking at a third down and a long five after Abraham Newsom picks up three yards and the Longhorns make mass defensive substitutions, third and five from the 43, and they come in with their speed package on the defensive front. Four-man line. Dimitri Moore now backs out of there. Now it's a back to a three-man line. Backs on either side of Middleton on third down, direct snap to Middleton, third down and five. Middleton play action pass, throws the out route ball is caught by number 34, but he is immediately brought down by Dylan Baxter, the free safety who came up to make the tackle on the big junior tight end, number 34, Ray Williams. Great play by Baxter there, yeah, Cam. Tremendous coverage by Baxter. He immediately closed the gap, baited the quarterback into thinking that the tight end was open, but used his great acceleration to close the gap, immediately wrapped up the ball carrier in a nice fundamental tackle, uh, no gain for the uh, the receiver. And it looks like we have uh, Jalen Sims back deep as the sole return man. It looks like a punt formation this time for Grand Prairie. Joe Reyes, the quarterback, stands on his own 32, awaiting the snap on fourth and five. Direct snap, here comes the rush. They're faking it. They throw it out. Got a man wide open, 50, 45, 40, 35, all the way down to the 30. One yard line goes number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, who took the pass on the fake punt from the quarterback, number 13, Joe Reyes, and a huge gain and a big first down with 444 to go in the first half for the Grand Prairie Gophers. Cam, we got to remember, uh-oh, there's a flag down on the field. So let's see what the flag is. Late flag. I don't know that it was late, but it was just spotted uh, by our crew here in the press box, and there is a flag down, and you wonder if there was an offensive lineman maybe downfield on the fake. Let's see. Which is quite likely. Pick play. Number 12, they ran the old pick play, and Nick Herrera, the junior defensive back who was lined up on the inside, picked a defensive back for Cedar Hill, and that did open up Peyton Westmoreland, who was wide open on the left sideline to take Reyes's pass, moved it all the way down to the 30-yard line of Cedar Hill, and what a play that is. That was going to be a gain 
of 29 yards, and it would have given a first down at the 30-yard line as it stands. Grand Prairie now going to be in punt formation, and there probably won't be another fake coming. Ray is standing on his own 17. Twin receivers back deep for the Longhorns. Reyes looks over the Cedar Hill defense and gets the snap, and it goes almost over his head, and it's partially blocked. Ball's going to land at the 50-yard line, and it's down there by Grand Prairie, I do believe. And great job by Eric Sutton fielding that ball because it actually hit Devin Raider's leg and would have been a live ball and able to be recovered by Grand Prairie for a first down. You're absolutely right, Cam. As we look at it on the replay on the big screen at the end zone, uh, we see that the ball did hit Devin Raider, and what a great play by Sutton to fall on that ball at midfield so Cedar Hill can retain possession. They come out with one receiver wide to the right, twins to the left, one back to the left of Davis. He gets the inside handoff. Nice hole up to the 45 and down to the 44-yard line goes number 21, Marquise Foreman. He picks up four on the play, make it second down and six. And uh, a huge, huge offensive interference penalty wiping out Grand Prairie's last drive. And now look at this. The Longhorns looking at first down, excuse me, second down and five from the 45-yard line. Kylan Ritchie, the H-back, comes strong to the right. Foreman, the running back, will be to the left of Davis in the shotgun. Twin receivers to the left, one to the right, four-man front for Grand Prairie. Davis looks over. Now motion from left to right goes Kagan Williams, and Davis will throw. Throws the out route. Got a man, Cam Buckley, at the 40-yard line. The ball is complete. The clock will continue to run as Buckley's forward progress was stopped, and he'll be two yards short of a first down. So we'll be looking at third and two for the Longhorns from the Grand Prairie 41. And again, a good route running by the Cedar Hill receivers. Uh, Buckley with his sure hands able to secure the football. Now uh, Cedar Hill on schedule with third and short. Backs on either side of Davis on third down. They hand it off inside to Kagan Williams across the 40, down to the 35-yard line, all the way down to the 33. Hard run by Kagan Williams for eight yards. He made a lot of that on his own, Cam. Yeah, and my favorite thing about Kagan Williams is just the way that he immediately gets north and south as soon as he has an opportunity. Uh, squares his shoulders up uh, parallel to the line of scrimmage, and he does everything that he can to get as many yards uh, as he can while also securing the football. Williams and Buckley come wide to the left, Stewart wide to the right. Foreman, the running back on the right of Davis, and Davis will throw straight back in a pocket. Pressure coming from the right. He's throwing it deep down food. He's got Josh Stewart down there in the end zone. Touchdown, Cedar Hill Longhorns. Had to wait for the official to call it. Holy moly, and there's a flag down, so we may be bringing this one back. Let's see the call. It's holding against the Cedar Hill Longhorns. It's going to wipe out a 33-yard touchdown pass from the quarterback, Avery Davis, and a great leaping catch in the back of the end zone by Josh Stewart. And yeah, that may be the third holding penalty uh, by the offensive line tonight. Oh, my God, that was such a great catch. And I feel so bad for uh, Avery Davis and Josh Stewart as that was uh, just a tremendous play by both of those guys. Uh, and that's why football is the ultimate team sport. All 11 players have to do their job for you to, to, to be successful as a team. First down and 20 from the 43. Twins to the right. One receiver to the short side of the field to the left. Williams and Foreman in the backfield with Davis. Williams goes in motion. Davis straight back in the pocket. He's in trouble. He escapes the rush at the 50. Throws a ball downfield. He got a man at the 30 up to the 27. It's Jalen Sims. A gain of 16, and what a play by the Magic Man, the quarterback, Avery Davis. He avoided three would-be tacklers who and were coming his, on the rush for Grand Prairie. And you don't see veteran quarterbacks keeping their eyes off the rush like that and down the field. A veteran move by a very young quarterback and just a tremendous throw as well. Second down and a long four. Direct snap to Davis. They hand it off on the sweep to Foreman to the 25. Makes one man miss at the 20 and another man miss, but he's going to be taken down just inside the 20-yard line. Give him eight yards on the carry, and with 135 to go in the half and the Longhorns leading 14-0, that'll be enough for a Cedar Hill Longhorn first down. And it looks like uh, we have a bit of a shootout 
over at Eagle Stadium. DeSoto up 20 to 17. Ah, South Grand Prairie making the comeback here at the Gopher Bowl. 124 to go in the first half, and the clock runs. Longhorns come wide receivers to either side. Williams, the running back to the left of Davis in the shotgun. Davis hands it off to Williams. No, he fakes it. Davis going to keep it around the left side and be tackled back at the 24-yard line. They're going to mark him up closer to the 22 with forward progress. But it was number 54, Tony Cross, the senior linebacker for Grand Prairie, who came in and made the tackle, and he was joined there by number 33, Gabriel Varela, also a senior linebacker. And with 58 seconds left, the Longhorns going to take their final timeout. We'll keep it right here. 58 seconds to go in the first half, and the Longhorns are out of timeouts. Grand Prairie still with three should they get the ball back. Longhorns having uh, all they can handle tonight from the feisty Grand Prairie Gophers of head coach Gary Bartell cam. Longhorns leading 14 to nothing, but uh, they're getting all they want right now. Hey, I want to give a shout out to one of our best listeners uh, and, and a guy that is uh, one of the true fans for the Cedar Hill Longhorns. That's Glenn Need, the father-in-law of uh, Joey McGuire. Uh, Glenn, at, at every game, a, a devout listener of ours, and we certainly appreciate his loyalty. Glenn, the uh, father of not only Joey's wife, Cam, but also of uh, the great major league pitcher from uh, the Atlanta Braves and the Colorado Rockies and of Duncanville High School, David Need. So, Glenn, glad to have you with us tonight. Glad you're at the game. Glad you're listening to Champion Sports Radio. Resuming play, second down and 12 from the 22. 58 seconds to go. Longhorns left hash mark moving from left to right. Send twin receivers left and right. Direct snap to Davis. He'll throw. Straight back, throws the ball down the middle. It's intended for Charleston Rambo, and he ran right into the umpire who was standing in the middle of the field. The ball falls incomplete, and that's just one of those things. Yeah. Charleston Rambo's got to know where that umpire is. Yeah, you got to run your route a little bit, either a little deeper or a little shallower. That way you don't have that collision because it can really be a bad for both parties. Luckily, no one was injured. Williams comes off the field, and number 21, Marquise Foreman checks in, trips to the right, one to the left on third and 12. Davis will throw straight back. They set up the screen, and Davis, or Foreman, drops the ball at the 25. Oh, my goodness. They had a little something set up, but Avery Davis actually threw the ball a little short there, Cam. Yeah. And that's going to force the Longhorns to come on and attempt a field goal of what will be at 40 yarder I do believe once they mark it down in fact they're going to mark it down at the 29 so let's make it a 39 yarder from the left hash mark Maverick Montiel Jalen Sims to hold Maverick takes a look at it the snap is good Montiel's kick is blocked it's blocked at the 25 and recovered by the Grand Prairie Gophers right there on the recovery it's number 28 Demarcus Rakestraw and the Longhorns, with 46 seconds left, have the field goal blocked, a special team slip up. And you really can't blame that on Montiel no. because on the extra point, Reggie Williams, a, a sophomore cornerback, came off the edge and nearly blocked it. This time, Grand Prairie successful with the block. And uh, unfortunately for Cedar Hill, uh, they also recovered, so Cedar Hill not able to take advantage and push this to a three-score game. 14 to nothing, 45 seconds to go for the Gophers, moving from left to right. They put Reyes back in at quarterback. He sends twins to the left and to the right. He has one running back, McGuire, to his left. Direct snap to Reyes on first down and 10, and he'll throw straight back in the pocket, looking, throwing the in route. Got a man, ball's intercepted and dropped. Oh, my goodness, number six, Eric Sutton, had the ball in his belly, and it slipped out. Excellent coverage, pass intended for number seven, Peyton Westmoreland. But Sutton almost gave it back to the Cedar Hill Longhorns right there. And is that five? That may be five, yeah, five. on the other that side. It Jamil is Jamil Moore. Five and six uh, are the two cornerbacks on either side for the Longhorns, and their front jerseys get bunched up, and I can't tell the difference between the two. A missed opportunity, 38.7 to go. Reyes in the shotgun, trips to the left, one to the right. Reyes sets up, throwing the deep out route. Got a man, but only up at the 29-yard line. The ball is complete there to number seven, the wide receiver, Westmoreland. And good and coverage by Josh Newman. 
Grand Prairie going to take their time out. We'll take a quick one too. Cedar Hill 14, Grand Prairie nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. Tired of only spending time as a family huddled around the TV? Would you like to enjoy some culture with your loved ones without breaking the bank? Then let me introduce you to the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. The GDYO provides music education and performance opportunities for musically talented youth, but this is no kid's concert. The GDYO comprises seven different ensembles made up of over 425 talented musicians ages 8 to 18, representing more than 50 communities in North Texas. You won't believe how amazing these ensembles sound until you hear it for yourself. So join them for one of their concerts at the Meyerson Symphony Center or Dallas City Performance Hall. For more information on how to make a donation, as well as a listing of upcoming GDYO concerts, visit gdyo.org. And if you know a talented young musician interested in an unbelievable experience, auditions take place in the spring. Connect with the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and at gdyo.org. Back at Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas. Grand Prairie taking their final timeout, excuse me, their second timeout on a first, excuse me, a second down from the 27-yard line. They're running back number 24. Jordan McGuire goes off tackle and gets a big hole all the way up to the 43-yard line of Grand Prairie, a 16-yard gain for McGuire. Uh, Longhorn's going to give up those kind of plays right now, Cam, with only 20.6 seconds to go. But when play resumes, Grand Prairie will have a first down and 10 on their own 26-yard line. Excuse me, their own 43-yard line with 20.6 seconds left in the first half. And the Gophers still have one timeout in their back pocket. And I guarantee you that Coach Gary Bartell would like nothing better than to let his big kicker, Juan Correa, uh, have an opportunity at a long field goal to get Grand Prairie on the board. Resuming play from the left hash mark, moving from left to right. Reyes in the shotgun, twin receivers to the left and to the right. Direct snap to Reyes on first down, straight back in the pocket. He's throwing a deep corner out, got a man out there, but it's incomplete. Intended for number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, but excellent coverage by the Longhorns defensive back there. And I believe that's number six, Eric Sutton. This time I can give him the correct props that he deserves. And with 15.2 seconds left and still one timeout remaining, Gophers looking at second down and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Yeah, those corner routes are really difficult to cover, so you really can't uh, speak enough uh, or compliment the corners and safeties from Cedar Hill enough because they've been playing a lot of zero coverage and able to shut down these Grand Prairie receivers. Trips to the right, one to the left. 15 seconds left. Reyes straight back in the pocket. They're trying to set up a screen. Ball's complete to McGuire at the 45 to the 50, and he's run out of bounds at the 48-yard line. A screen down the left sideline. Robert Thomas, the defensive end for Cedar Hill, really did a nice job of reading that screen. Calls the quarterback to have to throw it high and let the pursuit from the back end for Cedar Hill's defense come and make the tackle. So with one time out left for Grand Prairie. They had but six seconds left, trailing 14 to nothing and moving from left to right. The ball now third down and a yard from the Cedar Hill 48-yard line. And uh, Correa has a big leg. Juan Correa, the kicker for Grand Prairie. But I don't know if six seconds is enough time to, to make a completion far enough down the field and get a timeout to give Grand Prairie a shot at a field goal. But we'll take a look. Yeah, that's Twins, asking. excuse me, trips to the right, one to the left. Reyes in the shotgun, straight back in the pocket, looking, looking, throwing the ball deep downfield. Going to be well overthrown. Intended down there for number 10, Jalen Sims. And there's 1.1 second left on the clock. And, of course, we know about one point. Uh, one <laughs> seconds left on the clock Especially in this, this stadium. stadium. This stadium. Uh, a year ago, Cedar Hill, as Joey McGuire and I discussed on the pregame show, uh, it was in the end zone to our left uh, where Josh Stewart uh, was given one second extra or one second deserved, depending on who you talk to, for uh, his game-winning catch that clinched Cedar Hills District Championship and playoff berth that ended in a state championship. 1.1 second, twins to the left and to the right. Reyes in the shotgun, but Grand Prairie going to use their last timeout as a huge prevent defense is in place right now. Uh, got a chance to talk to Joey McGuire's uh, dad, who's down on the sideline before the game. Uh, healthy and doing well, and uh, 
let us know that, that, that his wife, Joey's mom, uh, stayed at home tonight to listen to us on the Champion Sports Radio Network. Boy, I tell you, the McGuire family, they, you can't ask for, for uh, Joey's parents and, and his in-laws, uh, some of our best listeners, and we certainly appreciate them. And it's always good uh, to, to hear good feedback uh, that Joey's mom is, is doing well and feeling well. And uh, we miss her when she's at the games. But, uh, Ms. McGuire, we love the fact that, that you're at home listening to Champion Sports Radio as your son, Cedar Hill Longhorns, lead the Grand Prairie Gophers tonight 14 to nothing, 1.1 second to go here in the first half of play. It's a fourth down and one. That's inconsequential at this point. Grand Prairie will send trips to the right, one receiver to the left, and one back in the backfield is McGuire. Reyes in the shotgun. Longhorns have two safeties inside the five-yard line. Direct snap to Reyes. Inside handoff on the draw to McGuire to the 40, to the 35 of Cedar Hill, and he's run out of bounds there at the 35, and that will bring the first half to an end. The Cedar Hill Longhorns getting all they want tonight from the feisty Grand Prairie Gophers. Cedar Hill 14, Grand Prairie nothing. When we come back, it'll be time for the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra halftime show from the Gopher Bowl. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast is under the direction and is copywritten by Champion Sports Radio. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of the audio stream, and any and all other use of the accounts of this broadcast without the direct written consent and permission of Champion Sports Radio is strictly prohibited. All rights are reserved by Champion Sports Radio and ChampionSportsRadio.com. This is a presentation of Champion Sports Radio, your home for championship broadcasts. Hey, everybody. This is Chris Daly from LoneStarGridiron.com, the authority on Texas high school football. Quick question. Did you play Texas high school football? If you did, it doesn't matter what school, it doesn't matter what year, we want to honor you at Lone Star Gridiron. Go over to LoneStarGridiron.com slash brotherhood and sign up. It's absolutely free, and we can honor you for the part you played in the greatest sport in the greatest state. Are you tired of only spending time as a family huddled around the TV? Would you like to enjoy some culture with your loved ones without breaking the bank? Then let me introduce you to the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra. The GDYO provides music education and performance opportunities for musically talented youth, but this is no kid's concert. The GDYO comprises seven different ensembles made up of over 425 talented musicians ages 8 to 18, representing more than 50 communities in North Texas. You won't believe how amazing these ensembles sound until you hear it for yourself. So join them for one of their concerts at the Meyerson Symphony Center or Dallas City Performance Hall. For more information on how to make a donation, as well as a listing of upcoming GDYO concerts, visit gdyo.org. And if you know a talented young musician interested in an unbelievable experience, auditions take place in the spring. Connect with the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and at gdyo.org. Are you looking for a way to promote your business or increase exposure? Do you just need more people to know that you're there? Join the Champion Sports Radio team and advertise during these games. In the last four years, Champion Sports Radio has broadcast over 600 games to more than 3.5 million listeners. And Champion Sports Radio wants to help you use major high school sports to reach thousands of local fans right in your community. Think about it. Die-hard fans just like you tune in each and every week giving your business unparalleled access to the community. It's the perfect way for smaller, individually owned businesses to cultivate a core clientele or expand their already loyal customer base. To secure your prime commercial spot during the broadcast, contact Thomas Lee at Champion Sports Radio by phone at 972-741-0334. That's 972-741-0334 or online at championsportsradio.com. Champion Sports Radio, your home for championship broadcast. Stay up on all the latest news about the teams you care about and know when your favorite games are on the air thanks to Champion Sports Radio social media. Either follow at Champion Sports on Twitter or like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash champion sports radio and you will know what time your game starts, who was named player of the week, 
or what your school's alumni are doing in college. That's on Twitter at Champion Sports and Facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio. Your home for championship social media. Gopher Bowl. We're here for the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra halftime show. The Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra and the new GDYO Jazz Institute invites you to enjoy a cultural experience with your family without breaking the bank. Visit gdyo.org for more information. Cam, uh, the on the field right now, of course, uh, our award-winning Cedar Hill Longhorn Band and Drill Team putting on a show for uh, the hosts of tonight's game, the Grand Prairie Gophers, and and I'm surprised that the 14 to nothing score. Uh, you know, Grand Prairie is a team. Uh, for instance, the DeSoto Eagles beat them. I believe it was 70 to six. And this game's got a long way to go. But uh, Cedar Hill, as they did a week ago against the Duncanville Panthers, appear to be a little sluggish, a little flat. Uh, you know, and, and you, you are looking at a team that has played in three consecutive uh, highest classification state championship games in the state of Texas, and, and it, it may be a little difficult for this team and for this coaching staff to stay at a high emotional pitch all the time. It, especially, excuse me. Especially when those guys are gone, right? So Richard Moore, uh, Demarcus Lodge, uh, Daniel Mc, McMillan, uh, uh, that senior leadership, right? The 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 uh, I can say Jake Ware, those guys, uh, uh, Denver Daniels, they've moved on to college, and so we have a, an infusion of young, very talented uh, individuals, but they don't have uh, a lot of the uh, the the experience that the previous uh, regime did. So they'll have to learn exactly what uh, the nameless, faceless opponent means. So where you bring the same effort, no matter who the guy is uh, you're competing against, because that's just the guy that you're competing against. Well, the Longhorns do lead 14 to nothing, uh, Grand Prairie. And let's give the Gophers and Coach Gary Bartell some credit, too. Uh, you know, they have done some wonderful things on the defensive side of the ball. Cedar Hill able to capitalize for two touchdowns. Uh, the first, a 12-yard, uh, excuse me, a 13-yard pass from Avery Davis to Cam Buckley uh, in the first period. And then in the second period, a 12-yard touchdown run by Avery Davis. But you take away the 91-yard drive that led to the second touchdown and a couple of big plays in the passing game that led to the first Longhorn touchdown. And all in all, the Grand Prairie Gophers have played pretty good defense against a Cedar Hill Longhorn offense that averages 405 yards a game and never has a problem scoring points. Yeah, and really Grand Prairie has, uh, I believe the, the tone was set when the onside kick was recovered to start the game. Coach Bartell, uh, a lot of gamesmanship, has done a tremendous job, even though they were not able to earn points on that particular drive. They, they're milking the clock down inside of five seconds every time they get a chance uh, and, and also have kind of gotten Cedar Hill out of sorts uh, because they've uh, not played uh, as they were scared or intimidated at all and have kind of been in a attack mode. Uh, throughout the contest, and these younger players are going to have to know that uh, while they are more uh, possibly more talented week in and week out, they're going to have to bring a high level of intensity because if you don't, uh, then the kids that are bringing the intensity and, and don't have the accolades uh, that, you know, Cedar Hill does have uh, may be able to one-up you uh, on a, a continued basis and it can – uh, eventually lead 
uh, possibly to a loss and maybe end the current winning streak. Well, Cedar Hill uh, has, has performed admirably all year. They've had some injuries that they've had to overcome. Uh, you know, as Joey McGuire was talking to me coming uh, off the field after our pregame show, he said, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm so critical. I have to remember we are 6-0, and uh, we are ranked number three in the state of Texas, and that says something about the effort and the attitude of, of his football team, and I couldn't agree with him more about that. We got some big games going on around the area right now. Of course, none bigger uh, to the fans of the Cedar Hill Longhorns and to other members of the uh, 86A Brigade, DeSoto, which of course uh, their struggles have been well documented this year already. Uh, they were the incoming number one team in the state of Texas above Allen. Uh, they got off to a slow start. Uh, as you said, they haven't won a home game yet this year, uh, but they are uh, playing South Grand Prairie, who also is tied with Cedar Hill and undefeated in district play. Uh, and that game going on at Eagle Stadium, and how that how's that one matching up? Uh, DeSoto with a two-score lead late in the first half as they're up 27-17 to 17 over South Grand Prairie. It looks like uh, DeSoto may be rounding into shape right around uh, time for the big rivalry game. Well, they come to Longhorn Stadium next Friday night, and, of course, we'll have that one here for you on Champion Sports Radio. If you can't be at Longhorn Stadium pulling uh, for your Longhorns and urging them on to victory, then please join us here on the Champion Sports Radio Network. That ought to be a good one. South Grand Prairie, uh, we will follow up with them the following week. Uh, that game also at, at Longhorn Stadium before, of course, the Longhorns end uh, with Mansfield High School, uh, also undefeated in district right now. And, and uh, it, it, it's going to be uh, after tonight's game against Grand Prairie. And, again, the Longhorns have all they want right now, right yeah. here. But, but the following three games, why it's so important, Cam, that the Longhorns yeah. pick up the pace here in the second half and make sure they put this game away and take care of business. Exactly, because it does not appear that you get a mulligan this year in district play. So every game is vital, and Cedar Hill will need to make sure that they're able to come out of tonight's contest uh, with a clean victory. And uh, it'll be important uh, moving forward to make sure from start to finish uh, that Cedar Hill is able to, uh, to execute and really clean up the offensive penalties because I believe that more than anything else has been what has hindered uh, Cedar Hill from being able to uh, stay on schedule and execute the way that they otherwise would have liked. Longhorns uh, leading Grand Prairie tonight, 14 to nothing. We're at halftime at the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, the Cedar Hill Longhorns on Champion Sports Radio. This broadcast of the Cedar Hill Independent School District is sponsored by In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. Call 972-851-7888 or online at incommandbroadcasting.com. Also, one of our sponsors tonight, ShockboxDFW.com. Be warned instantly when a player has experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. When we come back, we'll take a look at some first half stats as we continue on the great halftime show. Again, our score, Cedar Hill 14, Grand Prairie nothing, Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball Let's is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games. Zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition. Or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. 
Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org jazz. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforigindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforigindesign.com. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 4 million brain injuries occur every year due to sports in the U.S. They also estimate that 70% of concussions go unreported. Not identifying concussions early can be devastating, especially if the athlete continues to play with symptoms. Catching hard hits fast is critical, and that's why you need the Shockbox Helmet Impact Sensor. The Shockbox is a small sensor that easily attaches to most football, lacrosse, and hockey helmets and instantly sends a signal to a smartphone on the sidelines when the player has taken a hard hit that puts them at higher risk for injury. The free app receives data from the sensor, displays information about the impact, and even walks the user through a concussion assessment. The app also logs symptom and impact data for future medical use. Visit ShockboxDFW.com to learn more about the Shockbox Impact Alert Sensor and determine if it is the right option for your child. Be warned instantly when a player has experienced experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. ShockboxDFW.com Back in Grand Prairie, Texas at the Gopher Bowl, Cedar Hill 14, Grand Prairie nothing. We're in halftime of tonight's 8-6A game. And, uh, Cam, I know you've got some scores from around the Dallas-Fort Worth area that will be interesting to our listeners. Again, the 27-17 score that you gave us uh, in the second quarter, DeSoto over South Grand Prairie. Uh, also got Midlow and Duncanville going at it tonight. What's going on in uh, Duncanville? Yeah, Coach Samples, uh, Duncanville Panthers are trading – Trailing at uh, Midlothian by a score of ten to seven, uh, well, excuse me, hosting Midlothian and uh, trailing ten to seven was ten to nothing. So Duncanville possibly on a comeback trail. That game moving pretty quickly with two run-oriented offenses. It's, it's already in the second half, and they are in the third quarter. Also out in Irving, you've got Jesuit and Irving Nimitz. What's going on out there? That Jesuit football team, very strong program this year. Yeah, Jesuit. Uh, really piling it on at Irving School Stadium, uh, leading the Nimitz Vikings uh, by a score of 26 to nothing. Wow. And then District 10-6A, of course, uh, the surprise of that district. They beat Mesquite Horn a week ago. Uh, Randy Allen's Highland Park Scots, uh, they're, they're the Red Rifle, their quarterback out there, Henry Allen. Somebody wrote me this week uh, and asked me, is, is Henry Allen Randy Allen's son? Uh, which is funny because I know – I know Henry Allen's dad, Joel Allen, a, a lawyer in Dallas, and I, I made the comment back to him, not not, not as far as Joel knows. <laughs> no, no, no no kin between uh, the coach, uh, Randy Allen, and the quarterback, Henry Allen, but Highland Park is taking on Lake Highlands tonight over at Wildcat Ram Stadium. Yeah, and from my understanding, uh, Henry Allen plays like a uh, coach's son, and he, he, I guess he is a coach's son uh, to say, uh, in some regard, just a, a, a baseball coach's son, yeah, not a football coach's son. Uh, and and they, like you said, Bill, having a great season uh, leading the Scots uh, as they are ahead now 17-6. to six. And uh, the team they defeated last week, Mesquite Horn, uh, up on Richardson about a score of 14 to 13 over interesting. there in District 1068. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there, Cam, but interestingly, Mesquite Horn up 14 13, and, and, and maybe we can get word, uh, of course, injured last week in the first half of their loss to Highland Park was their uh, all state quarterback and Oklahoma pledge, 
commit Chris Robinson, and we don't know if Chris is playing tonight or not. Uh, if he's if he's not playing, then then Mesquite Horn obviously uh, I don't know who is their backup, but it be it would be tough to have the same kind of of production uh, that you would have if Chris Robinson was in the game. Yeah, that would be one heck of a coaching job if you're able to uh, to rebound and have your team to still play at the same uh, high level as they did with their uh, starting quarterback out. And just checking out the uh, the box score, score looks like um, uh, he is not playing. They have an Ivory Martin. Ivory uh, Martin, who's two for six. But uh, Patrick Carter-Wells, uh, what happens, uh, what's supposed to happen when you have a guy go down, uh, other players on the team pick up their level of play. Patrick Carter-Wells, 13 carries, 113 yards, carrying that load now since the quarterback has been injured. Well, I, I know uh, from from my own baseball coaching experience, I know the Robinson family and uh, uh, Chris and his older brother Ryan, both excellent baseball players as well. But uh, tough week for Bob Stoops and the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, not only did they lose to their arch rivals, the Texas Longhorns. What this happens past- when you trespass and you come somewhere you're not welcome? <laughs> <laughs> he said that, folks, not me. <laughs> the uh, the Coach Stoops not only loses, but uh, very unfortunately his commit, Chris Robinson, injured last week against Highland Park. Again, we don't know the extent of that injury, but we wish Chris uh, Robinson all the very best, uh, an outstanding player. Also, uh, you know, a, a, somebody in a program that's – Near and dear to mine and Cam's heart is Hurst L.D. Bell, uh, first-year coach Michael Glaze, the, of course the former offensive guru for Joey McGuire here at Cedar Hill, the architect of uh, back-to-back state championship offenses. Uh, uh, how are things going? I know he has. they haven't won a game yet this year at Hurst L.D. Bell, but I, I do know that, that Coach Glaze will eventually get that turned around and uh, – and, and plus, they're in an extremely tough district over there in, in 7-6-A. Yeah, the cards are stacked against L.D. Bell. Right now, they're trailing at uh, Mustang Panther Stadium out in Grapevine against Collierville Heritage by a score of 28 nothing there in the uh, third quarter. Um, and so... Uh, Patience is what I would preach to the L.D. Bell Raider faithful. Uh, Michael Glaze, an excellent football coach and a a really phenomenal offensive football mind. He'll get things turned around there if given the time. He he definitely will. Uh, That first year is uh, generally a rocky one. It's really hard to implement uh, your plan and program uh, in that short period of time. So uh, with the full offseason to get things going the way he wants to, uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Glaze will get some big wins here in the very near future. Well, he may be struggling, but there's a couple of programs over there in 7-6-A that know their way around the playoffs and uh, down Championship Alley, and that's Euless Trinity and South Lake Carroll. And, boy, they're hooked up tonight at uh, Bedford's Pennington Field. And Euless Trinity and South Lake Carroll, do we have a score on them, Cam? Yes, we do, and uh, Trinity leads uh, their rival, South Lake Carroll, by a score of 21-14 to 14 in the uh, second quarter as they uh, start to approach the second half. Two run-oriented programs uh, and two powerhouses, um, and, and Trinity, of course, with a, uh, a little bit of change in staff but not a change in success as they have uh, had a lot of success throughout this season early on of course Steve White excuse me Steve Lineweaver their longtime coach stepped down but uh, he obviously left the cupboard full and Euless Trinity again one of the top programs uh, in the state of Texas interesting about that game uh, South Lake Carroll will almost certainly uh, be the one of the small school Division II representatives coming out of that district. Trinity obviously will be one of the large schools. And, of course, the Cedar Hill Longhorns uh, ran into South Lake Carroll last year in the Division II state playoffs, defeating them out at SMU on their way to a state championship. So South Lake Carroll could be on the horizon for one of the 8-6-A teams down the road. And uh, South Lake is always a tremendously tough matchup. Um it's always a toss-up of a game when uh, we're going into that one, and one it's one that make you it makes you a little bit nervous uh, as to you know how 
your team's going to be able to uh, to gain consistent yards, score points, or even keep up because it seems like South Lake always has a couple Division One quarterback, uh, Division One uh, running back, a uh, couple linemen that's going to go to some big time schools and some secondary players as well. So they can always find a way to match up with you defensively, and then attack your weaknesses uh, with their high uh, high powered and potent offenses. 14 to nothing, Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas. Cedar Hill leading the Grand Prairie Gophers. Uh, one of our sponsors tonight, Lone Star Gridiron, has a question. And I think it's a pretty good question for a lot of our listeners because I think I know what the answer is going to be. Did you play Texas high school football? If you did, you're part of an elite group, and Lone Star Gridiron wants to honor you. Visit LoneStarGridiron.com slash brotherhood for more information. Uh, so if you played Texas high school football, visit LoneStarGridiron.com slash brotherhood for more information. Cedar Hill Longhorn Football is a presentation of Champion Sports Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Champion Sports. Facebook is dot com slash Champion Sports Radio. And, of course, online at ChampionSportsRadio.com. When we come back, We'll give you the stats from the first half and get set for our second half of play tonight between the Cedar Hill Longhorns and the Grand Prairie Gophers. You're listening to Cedar Hill Longhorn Football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball, let's see what you got. But Whirly Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games, zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition, or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforigindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforigindesign.com. Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org jazz. Many heart conditions can be fixed, but many of us don't know we have a problem until it's too late. On April 2, 2009, Zachary Schraw, a 16-year-old sophomore offensive lineman, died of sudden cardiac arrest, the number one cause of death among student-athletes. Like so many SCA victims, Zach had no heart issues, nor did anyone in his family. If Zach had an echocardiogram, he might have been able to avoid suffering a condition that takes 10,000 of our youth each year. In his memory, Living for Zachary was formed to try and prevent SCA from taking the lives of youth everywhere. Join in the fight today and stop the silent killer of SCA by scheduling your young athlete for an echocardiogram, a procedure that can detect any heart issue with 99% accuracy. For more information, visit www.livingforzachary.org. That's living, the number four, Zachary.org, and let your heart be heard.
Grand Prairie, Texas at the Gopher Bowl, the Cedar Hill Longhorns. Coming out of the tunnel at halftime, and now so are the Grand Prairie Gophers. Longhorns leading 14 to nothing, and we'll get you some quick stats from the first half of action. Cedar Hill scoring twice, first on a 13-yard touchdown pass from Avery Davis to Cameron Buckley, and then on a 12-yard touchdown run by Avery Davis. Longhorns in the first half. Uh, really stymied from time to time by, by Grand Prairie, but nonetheless, they still were able to put up 208 total yards, Cam, to Grand Prairie's 89, and I think the, the, the real tell is uh, for Cedar Hill is, uh, you know, their balance. They rushed it for 82 yards and passed it for 126. And uh, could have been a lot closer to 200 uh, if there was one big play that was – uh, call back on a touchdown uh, on holding uh, penalty. Unfortunately for uh, Cedar Hill, the holding penalties have been a bit of an issue. But as you said, Bill, they have still had a lot of success, 126 uh, through the air with Avery Davis and a uh, another 70-some-odd uh, yards, 74 yards, excuse me, uh, rushing. Davis, 8 out of 12 uh, in the passing game for that 126 you mentioned, Cam. And on the rushing side, Kagan Williams goes 6 for 57 yards. Marquise Foreman chips in 3 for 17. Josh Stewart has a couple of catches for 54 yards. Buckley, a couple for 30 plus a touchdown. So, uh, resuming play to start the second half, the Cedar Hill Longhorns will be kicking off from right to left, back deep. For the Grand Prairie Gophers, number five, Reggie Williams. He's joined back there by number 24, Jordan McGuire. To begin the second half, Maverick Montiel will be kicking off from right to left on your radio screen. Set to go in the third quarter. Longhorns leading 14-0. Glad you're with us for the second half here on Champion Sports Radio. Maverick Montiel's kick is going to be fielded at the 28-yard line, and it's fair caught there by number 18, Blake Ingram, the senior wide receiver. And so from their own 28-yard line, moving from left to right, the Grand Prairie Gophers will start the third period of play. Looks like they'll come out with their quarterback will be number 13, Joe Reyes. Reyes uh, switched off some in the first half with uh, Bakari Middleton, the sophomore. So we'll make sure uh, as Grand Prairie is huddling up on the sideline who's going to be that quarterback, but I do believe it's going to be Reyes. Three-man front for the Longhorns. Longhorns come out and press coverage on the outside. One receiver wide to the left, Peyton Westmoreland for the Gophers. Wide to the right is number two, Adriel Bradshaw. Backs on either side of Reyes in the shotgun. Direct snap on first down. Reyes will throw straight back, throwing the ball down the middle. It's going to be an interference penalty against Cedar Hill's number five, Jamil Moore, who got tangled up with the intended receiver number seven, Peyton Westmoreland up at the 40-yard line. And a bit of a tough break there for Jamil Moore. He had good coverage, was stride for stride with the receiver uh, on the slant pass. And the, the issue, a lot of times the officials will allow you a little leeway as long as you don't turn the body of the receiver. Uh, but unfortunately, Moore was not given that leeway. No, and it looked like their feet may have gotten a little tangled inadvertently, which caused the receiver to go down, but the officials are going to say it's interference. Gopher's going to have a first down at their own 40, moving from left to right, just underway in the second half. Cedar Hill leading 14-0. Reyes on first and 10, backs on either side, inside handoff to the first back through. It's the Newsom big hole across the 45 and all the way down to the 50-yard line. Goes number 22, Abraham Newsom for a pickup of 10 yards. And again, one of the things that's got to be a little concerning for Steve Limley, Joey McGuire, and the Cedarville staff is that Grand Prairie's had some success running against the interior defensive line of the Longhorns. Yeah, and that was something that we uh, kind of was a, a little bit concerned about going in with some of the changes that were made from the defensive line to the offensive line because there's only uh, so much uh, that you can do um, and only so much uh, depth that you may have uh, here on the 5A level. Westmoreland wide to the left, Bradshaw wide to the right. Inside handoff to the first back through across the 50 and down to the 48 is number four, Broderick Green. Longhorns in on the tackle, number 99, Joseph Lamott. 
And he's joined in there by number 30, Devin Raider. Pickup of only two for the Gophers. Second down and eight. They're now in the Cedar Hill end of the field at the 48-yard line. As we go inside 10:50 here in the third quarter, Cedar Hill leading 14 to nothing. Checking in. For Grand Prairie now, number 10, Chris Jeter, the wide receiver, and he'll go wide to the left, coming wide to the right to the near side of the field, Adriel Bradshaw. Gophers move from left to right. Ball's on the right hash mark. Broderick Green and Newsom, the running backs, straight back in the pocket goes the quarterback. Reyes, he pulls it down. He's going to try to run. He's in trouble all the way back at his own 42-yard line. And he's taken down by the Longhorns, number 44, Robert Thomas, and a host of Longhorn teammates. And a mistake there by quarterback Joe Reyes. He started forward and then decided to reverse his field cam and go backwards. Bad move. He's dropped all the way back at the 40. They're going to mark him actually up at the 43, but that's going to make it third down and 22 for Grand Prairie. Yeah, there's an old adage, he who hesitates is lost, and that is exactly what happened to Reyes, uh, made a decision, then changed his mind. You can't do that against such a speedy defense. Third and 19, actually, from the 43. Reyes in the shotgun. Direct snap, straight back in the pocket. Looking, throwing the ball out in the flat. Got a man, Newsom at the 45, and he's taken down at the 50-yard line. Nice defensive And that's play. by Miracle Broussard. Miracle Broussard, my favorite name on the Longhorn team, and I got quite a few of them, but Miracle's at the top. He brings down Newsom at the 50, uh, make it the 49-yard line, only a gain of six. Going to be fourth down, still 12 to go. And twin receivers coming to the right, one to the left. And now make it twin receivers to the left. One back to the right of Reyes. Fourth and 11 from their own 49. Reyes may be in a quick kick spot. He does quick kick it. Ball bounces at the Cedar Hill 20. Rolls down near the 16-yard line and is killed there. That's going to be a 35-yard quick kick with no return by quarterback Joe Reyes and Coach Gary Bartell using the quick kick uh, for the second time tonight. An effective tool. Yeah, very smart play because the defenders are forced to stay since the offense is lining up in a standard formation. The defenders are st forced to also do the same, and uh, that leaves you with no one there to – recover or catch the ball and stop it from rolling inside of the 10. Longhorns come out from their own 14 first down inside handoff to the first back through is Kagan Williams. He breaks one tackle at the line of scrimmage, but he's going to be taken down after that. A long time to get the whistle to blow as uh, yeah, they let Kagan like the, out they there. let Kagan stand up there for quite a while. Kylan Ritchie gets his helmet popped off. He's going to come out of the game. Longhorns going to come back with number I believe that's uh, 23, Lonnie Burgess now in at the H-back spot for Richie. A loss of a yard on the play, second and 11 from the 15. Twins to the right, tight end strong to the left, one back behind Davis. Direct snap, Davis throws the quick out on the bubble screen to the 15, 20, and all the way up to the 25-yard line it goes, I believe that's Cam Buckley on the reception. It is Cam yeah, Buckley. It was. And he's going to take the ball all the way up to the 25-yard line. And it's going to be very close to a first down. In fact, they're going to mark him about a half yard short. So third down and about a half yard to go for the Longhorns. They bring in two running backs. One on either side of Davis in the shotgun. H back strong to the right. Now motions across the formation from right to left. On third and a yard, they hand it off inside and across the 25, across the 30, and all the way out to the 32-yard line goes the scat back number 21, Marquise Foreman. Pickup of seven and enough for the first Cedar Hill first down. Correction, yes, the first Cedar Hill first down here in the second half. 8.46 to go in the third quarter. Longhorns leading 14 to nothing over the feisty Grand Prairie Gophers. And Foreman uh, with a tremendous job following his uh, blockers and being very patient, allowing the offensive linemen to uh, set up and square up the defenders on the way to that first down run. Twins to the right and the left. Ball in the middle of the field at the 32. Davis in the shotgun. Play action pass straight back in the pocket. Looking, looking. Now he's going to pull it down. Throws the ball across the middle. Ball's incomplete. Intended up at the 47-yard line for number 10, Jalen Sims. And I tell you, Cam, it looked like 
Davis could have pulled the ball down there and run for, for some positive yardage. Yeah, he could have ran for days, maybe even had a touchdown with the uh, moves that he's able to make in the open field. Uh, I think right now Davis is being a little bit cautious in regard to running and trying to distribute the ball to the receivers. Not sure uh, maybe if he's been, you know, kind of instructed to allow the uh, the playmakers to make the plays, uh, being those at the receiver position. On first down, excuse me, on second down and 10, they hand it off inside to Marquis Foreman. He's going to get up to near the 35-yard line, maybe just short of the 35. He's going to be a yard short of the 35-yard line, getting a little chippy. And here comes a flag in that's really not necessary, unfortunately, on either player, the uh, Grand Prairie and Cedar Hill players getting a little chippy after the whistle, and that flag came in pretty quick. Yeah. And now, now of course, will be the proverbial well, offsetting, offsetting penalties. We'll have to figure this out once we see. And now Grand Prairie saying it's going to be against the Cedar Hill Longhorns. That's a call I don't really care for, to be perfectly honest with you. But then again, I'm not down on the field. They, they can't are hear what was said. That's so. right. They are. I'm not. From the 35, they're going to mark it back 15 yards to the 20 yard line. So, 15 uh, yard penalty instead of second down and well, I gotta uh, tell you, about Bill, seven. It's going to be second and 22. That's nearly every offensive position that there's been a penalty. Uh, on the offensive line. I, I really just hope that the guys can kind of get get keyed in and focused and, and just play the game. Twins to the right hand to the left. Longhorns moving from right to left. Ball on the left. Hash mark. Williams to the left of Davis, who will throw on second down. Straight back. Throwing it down the middle. Got a man. Ball's caught up at the 40-yard line by Jalen Sims. On a crossing route, 20 yards, make it 21. They mark it at the 41, a 21-yard pass from Avery Davis to Jalen Sims on the skinny post. Yeah, tremendous route by, uh, by Jalen Sims and a good read. Way to set his feet. Uh, very fundamentally sound has been Avery Davis throughout this contest. Third down and a yard. He came up a yard short. Williams, the running back to the right of Davis. On third down, Davis keeps it on the quarterback draw, makes one man miss, gets across the 45 and up to the 46. Give him five yards and enough for a Cedar Hill Longhorn first down with 7-10 to go here in the third quarter. And the Cedar Hill Longhorns leading the Grand Prairie Gophers 14 to nothing. Longhorns looking for a little more. Not comfortable quite yet. Lonnie Burgess comes in at the H-back for Kylan Ritchie. Twin receivers to the right are Stewart and Kagan Williams. One receiver to the left, Cam Buckley. Foreman, the running back, to the right, and before the ball can be snapped, flags come in. Wasn't a delay a game penalty. Cedar Hill has 12 men on the field, they say. And they did, and it was uh, the tight end, number 88, Parker Cup who stayed on the field when the coaches were trying to get him off. It didn't work. Longhorns now looking at a first and 15 from their own 41. Go trips to the right and twins to the left. Empty set backfield now for Avery Davis. Ball on the left hash mark. Longhorns moving from right to left here at the Gopher Bowl. Direct snap to Davis. He throws the bubble screen to the outside. Got Sims. Makes one man miss. 45, 50. A 45 and all the way down to the 44-yard line goes Jalen Sims, a gain of 14 yards. That'll set up second down and one. And, and the quick bubble screen and quick uh, setup passes have worked to Cedar Hill's advantage tonight, Cam. Yeah, Jalen Sims, a uh, tremendous job uh, securing the football, getting immediately upfield, nearly getting that first down. But now Cedar Hill... Uh, more importantly, is back on schedule with the down and distance. With 6.06 .06 to go in the third quarter, the Longhorns will have a second down and one. There's a timeout on the field. We'll keep it here. And the official, that's an official's timeout. Not sure why the officials are calling the timeout, but they are. Uh, and both teams, strangely enough, Cam, it's an official's timeout, and both teams are going to the sideline. Yeah, generally officials don't allow that during, during official timeout. I well, guess they are deciding well, at, to to measure to for measure. the first down yeah. on what would have been a second down and one. So uh, Longhorns and Gophers take advantage. Uh, the, it is short by about a foot. 
of the first down. So when play resumes, there will be 6.06 to go in the third. Longhorns clinging to it. That's what we knew. Sir? It's exactly what we knew, right? It was yeah, yeah. It was it, second, it, in. second in about a, a half yard, but somebody wanted the measurement, so the measurement came. When we resume play, the Longhorns uh, will have a second down and about a foot to go for the first from the 44-yard line of Grand Prairie. One back behind Davis on second down and one. Direct snap to Avery. They hand it off inside to Williams, coming right to the 45, 40, 35. Breaks the tackle inside the 30 all the way down to the 27-yard line. Boy, Kagan Williams, one tough son of a gun. 14-yard pickup for Kagan Williams will be enough for a Cedar Hill first down and the Longhorns trying to shake the pesky Grand Prairie Gophers here with 5.40 to go in the third period of play and the Longhorns clinging to a 14-0 lead send twin receivers to the left and to the right. One back forming to the left of Davis. Davis straight back in the pocket, looking, looking. He's scrambling, breaks away, throwing the ball deep downfield. Got a man down there. Ball's tipped away in the end zone. Nice defensive play. Ball tipped away by Reggie Williams, the sophomore. It was intended for number 11, Charleston Rambo. Yet again, an apparent opportunity on that play for Davis to tuck the ball, take off, and run. He had plenty of real estate in front of him, but he opted to try to hit the home run and a good defensive play there by Reggie Williams, the defensive back for Grand Prairie. That makes it second and 10 from the Grand Prairie 28. Twins to the left, one to the right. Davis will throw, throws the out route. Got a man, Josh Stewart, from his tight end position again down to the 15-yard line. And that's something that uh, the offensive staff has used now at least three or four times tonight, Josh Stewart running a route from his uh, from the tight end position instead of the wideout position. Yeah, because Josh Stewart is one of the uh, few guys that's strong enough to play on the interior like that and match up with the defensive ends and block and be a blocking threat, but also fast enough uh, to run by a defensive back. First and 10 from the 15, twins to the left. Jet sweep from left to right to Kagan Williams. He's trying to turn the corner. He does. 15, 10, breaks the tackle. Five, breaks another tackle down to the three, two, one. Touchdown. What a run by Kagan Williams. No flags on the play. Muscle up time for Kagan Williams. He goes 15 yards on the jet sweep from left to right. And the Cedar Hill Longhorns lead 20 to nothing in a Grand Prairie player. Uh, who got some of the wrath of the run of Kagan the Beast Williams, who took two Grand Prairie defenders into the end zone. One of them uh, remains down on the ground. We'll try to get a number for you on that. But Williams, with 444 to go in the third quarter, extends Cedar Hill's lead to 20 to nothing. And the Grand Prairie player that's down will get you a number. But while... He is down. There is a timeout on the field. We'll take one, too. Cedar Hill 20, Grand Prairie nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football. We'll be back in a moment. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Come Whirly on. Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games. Zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition. Or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. Back at the Gopher Bowl, the Grand Prairie defender, number 28, DeMarcus Rakestraw, does come off the field under his own power, we're happy to say. 
We'll keep an eye and see if he's able to come back in, but with 4.44 to go on the heels of a powerful touchdown run from Kagan Williams, Jalen Sims will hold the Garrett McGuire snap. Maverick Montiel will try the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With 4.44 to go in the third quarter, our score, the Cedar Hill Longhorns 21, the Grand Prairie Gophers 0. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. about the teams you care about and know when your favorite games are on the air thanks to Champion Sports Radio social media. Either follow at Champion Sports on Twitter or like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio and you will know what time your game starts, who was named Player of the Week, or what your school's alumni are doing in college. That's on Twitter at Champion Sports and facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio. Your home for championship social media. The Grand Prairie Gophers trailing the Cedar Hill Longhorns 21 to nothing. 444 to go here in the third period of play from the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas. Cedar Hill set to kick off from right to left. Maverick Montiel will be doing the kicking for the Longhorns. Back deep, number 24, Jordan McGuire. He stands on his own 20-yard line. He's joined at the 20-yard line on the opposite side of the field by number two, Adriel Bradshaw. Montiel has consistently pooch kicked the ball tonight, and he looks like he's in a position to do the same now. He approaches and does hit a pooch kick, and it is going to be Bradshaw taking it at the 20, up the sidelines and steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And now they're saying that Bradshaw stepped out of bounds on the 20-yard line when he actually caught the ball, which... I don't know how that would be possible because he looked like he was well. Well, well he was – oh, you know what might have happened oh, there? So, well, he didn't, but someone, someone must did. have because he caught the ball on the numbers. He wasn't close to the sideline. Right. Which, which that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. That's what fooled me, but I guess what happened there was a fair catch was signaled by someone on the Grand Prairie team. Yeah, and then you, and your teammate can't advance the ball if, if you fair catch – or if so someone, where, anyone fair catch. Yeah, so wherever the ball is caught, that's where it will – be uh, spotted, and that is the case here. First down and 10 on the 20. Now in at quarterback, Bakari Middleton, the sophomore, backs on either side, motion across the formation from right to left, direct snap to Middleton. Middleton misses the handoff, so he keeps it himself, and boy, man, he runs in to a flying number 30, Devin Raider. And I tell you, Devin Raider isn't the biggest kid in the world, but he is a linebacker that out, will man. bring the wood. Yeah, I would not want to get hit by anyone from this linebacking core. I think this may be the best group of linebackers uh, that Coach McGuire has had. Javantes Johnson in at middle linebacker right now, number 32. And, boy, Johnson's a kid, you know, six foot, 185-pound senior, and he's another guy that will lay the wood. And we already know about Dimitri Moore, what he can do. Twins to the left, one receiver to the short side of the field to the right, second and 10 from the 20. Direct snap out in the pocket. Ball is thrown out on the left flat, intended for number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, but knocked away a good defensive play there by number five, Jamil Moore. I'm sorry, it's number six. There goes that jersey again. Number six, Eric Sutton is the one that makes the nice defensive play to knock the ball away from Westmoreland. And with 3.51 to go in the third, and the Longhorns leading 21 to nothing, now – the sophomore quarterback, Bakari Middleton, faces a third down and 10 from his own 20. Backs on either side, twin receivers to the left, one to the right, direct snap to Middleton. Straight back in the pocket, Longhorns blitzing. Here it comes. They got him, and they're going to take him down back at the 16-yard line. Oh, Robert Thomas, along with number 99, Joseph Lamott, team up to make the sack on the quarterback, the sophomore, Bakari Middleton. That's going to be a loss of four back at the 16. And Joe Reyes 
the starting quarterback tonight comes on to be in punt formation for the Grand Prairie Gophers. Back deep for the Longhorns, number 10, Jalen Sims. He's joined back there by, I believe that's number two, Malik Orr. They stand around midfield. Longhorns do need to be wary of the fake, even on fourth and 14 from their own 15. Grand Prairie with nothing to lose. Direct snap to Reyes. Here comes the rush. Reyes line drives the punt down the middle of the field. Longhorn's going to have to let it roll, and it's going to take a good Grand Prairie roll across the 50 down to the 45-yard line. And that's going to be a 40-yard punt with no return. It wasn't the prettiest punt in the world by Joe Reyes, but it did get the job done, Cam. Yeah, uh, Reyes, again, highly effective. Uh, not textbook, but... The most important thing is uh, that, like we said, he was highly effective. Still in the third quarter, uh, out in DeSoto, 27 to 17. DeSoto leading South Grand Prairie, mid-low over Duncanville, 17 to 7. Now in Duncanville, twins to the right, H back strong to the right, inside handoff to Foreman across the 45 to the 50, down to the 40. Five-yard line before Foreman's run out of bounds on the far side by number 44, Victor Rangel, the junior defensive back, but not before he gains nine yards and sets the Longhorns up with a second down and a yard from the 46-yard line after a nine-yard run by number 21, Marquise Foreman. Now in the game, the sophomore running back, number 29, Josh Fleeks, is lined up behind Avery Davis. On second and one, Davis hands it off inside to Fleeks. Fleeks trying to get to the right, breaks the tackle, 45, 40, 35, 30, turn out the lights. Josh Fleeks, the sophomore, is going to go 46 yards for a Cedar Hill Longhorn touchdown, but there are flags on the play back at the 44-yard line of Cedar Hill. And, boy, Joey McGuire is halfway out on the field, and he has given the official the business. This is going to be a hold against Cedar Hills number 62, Isaiah Kemp, the 6'3", 270-pound junior offensive guard, and, and that's going to wipe out an electric 46-yard touchdown run. At the, in all fairness to the kid, I, I really don't know what the holding uh, penalty was. I mean, I, I'm obviously not as close uh, as the, uh, the official there, but I – did, you really didn't see what the holding It was. marks it back to the Cedar Hill 43, makes it second down and 11 now. Inside handoff to Foreman coming right. He's going to be taken down at the 43-yard line. No gain on the play. Great tackle out there by number 44, Victor Rangel, for the... Grand Prairie Gophers and the Longhorns have a player down on the field at the 42. Looks like an offensive lineman, but we can't get a number yet. And that's going to bring us to a timeout on the field with 151 to go in the third. Cedar Hill 21, Grand Prairie nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football. We'll be back in a moment. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforigindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforigindesign.com. Back at the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, the Cedar Hill Longhorns with 151 to go in the third period of play uh, after having a 46-yard touchdown run by sophomore running back Josh Fleeks wiped out by a holding penalty on the following play after a no gain on a run, a Cedar Hill offensive lineman remains down on the field being attended to by Longhorn trainers uh, at the 42 on the near sideline. And while we're waiting to see uh, if that offensive lineman is going to be okay, uh, maybe you can give us a few scores from around the area. Yeah, there's a, an update to the DeSoto South Grand Prairie game over at Eagle Stadium. Uh, South Grand Prairie now trails by only three. 
uh, as the score has been, the, uh, as the score has changed to 27 to 24, uh, DeSoto up. All right, we'll keep an eye on that for you. And Antoine Yarborough, the defensive lineman who moved over this week uh, to the offensive side of the ball, is unfortunately the Longhorn player who was injured on the play. Uh, he's hobbling off uh, with putting no weight on his left ankle and being taken off by the trainers. So his play resumes. The Longhorns from their own 43 will have a third down and 12 ball on the left hash mark as the Longhorns move from right to left. Twin receivers to both sides of the field. One running back fleeks behind Davis. Direct snap to Davis. He'll throw straight back in the pocket. Throwing the ball to field. Got a man. Cam Buckley wide open, and he's going to take it to the house. And there are no flags down this time. A 57-yard touchdown pass from Avery Davis to a wide open Cam Buckley going down the left sideline. And can you say blown coverage, Cam? Because that's what that had to be. Yeah, there were uh, two Grand Prairie defenders uh, taking the short part of the field. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, what the coverage call was, obviously. But a uh, tremendous job of taking advantage of the poor execution uh, did Avery Davis and Cam Buckley. Garrett McGuire's snap is a good one. Jalen Sims' hold is a good one. Maverick Montiel's kick is a good one. And with 118 to go in the third period, we'll keep it right here. The Cedar Hill Longhorns have extended their lead over the pesky Grand Prairie Gophers. And I've said pesky a lot about uh, Grand Prairie tonight, but, boy, that's just what they've been. They have just been hanging around and hanging around. But a couple of third-quarter touchdowns by the Longhorns have increased that lead to 28 to nothing. And the Longhorns now, uh, the way their defense is playing, in pretty good shape here going into the fourth quarter of tonight's football game. Yeah, you wouldn't uh, think that Grand Prairie uh, they, would be able to move the ball much, uh, especially not enough to be able to uh, score uh, four times to overtake uh, Cedar Hill because it would take four uh, scores and a, at least a two-point conversion for a Grand Prairie to pose a, uh, a threat uh, toward winning this game. But Cedar Hill's defense just has been magnificent. Um, one more score update, Bill. Uh, Mid Duncanville was moving the ball and in the red zone of Midlothian. Not sure if there had been a turnover, uh, but that has switched and uh, Midlothian uh, has increased their lead 17-7 to seven, uh, over uh, Duncanville there at Panther Stadium. Okay, so Midlothian remains ahead. 28-0 uh, here at the Gopher Bowl. Longhorns leading Grand Prairie. Cedar Hill Longhorns on Champion Sports Radio. Tonight's broadcast of the Cedar Hill Longhorns brought to you by Second Thought Theater. State of Mind 2015 featuring Derek Phillips. A night of fun and fundraising on Saturday, November 7th. Featuring the actor who played Billy Riggins from Friday Night Lights. So, Montiel's kick comes down to the 20-yard line, and it's returned up to the 28 where the Cedar Hill defense, uh, excuse me, kick coverage team takes the Grand Prairie return man down. And there is a flag that comes down at the end of the play, so we'll have to wait and see what that call is. But back to the second thought, Theater State of Mind 2015. Again, that features Derek Phillips. And on November 7th, uh, the actor who played Billy Riggins from Friday Night Lights, uh, will be part of uh, a, a fundraising effort, and we encourage you to go to FridayNightLights.go to SecondThoughtTheater.com for more information. Okay, we have an offsetting penalty. As you heard, Miracle Broussard was the uh, guilty party for the Longhorns, and as a result of that, of the offsetting penalty, the ball will be at the 27-yard line of the Grand Prairie Gophers, who move from left to right with 111 to go in the third quarter, and the Longhorns leading 28-0. Reyes back in at quarterback, twin receivers to the right and one to the left. Inside handoff is fake. They throw the deep out, and the ball's complete to Westmoreland. He gets all the way up to the 37-yard line before he's run out of bounds by Robert Reitzel, the cornerback. That's going to be a gain of 10 yards and enough for a first down and a really nice deep out throw there from the quarterback Reyes to Peyton Westmoreland. Good arm strength. Yeah, and Reyes has made that throw a few times tonight. That's actually been his best throw. And 
uh, one that he's been uh, most accurate on. Twins to the left, to the wide side of the field, and to the right, to the short side. One back behind the quarterback, Reyes, in the shotgun. Direct snap. They hand it off inside to McGuire, the running back, and he gets to the 40-yard line before he's taken down by number 22 on a fine form tackle. That's Henson Cooper, the uh, excuse me, Hennon Cooper, the 5'10", 185-pound senior outside linebacker. Yeah, and again, the linebacking core has been highly effective, uh, and it's really due to the defensive line and just how stout they've been, not allowing any of the offensive linemen to get to the second level. So the uh, linebackers have been able to freely flow and make plays on the ball carriers throughout the game. Longhorns getting their backup defensive unit in almost all the way across the board now. Second down and seven from the 41 of Grand Prairie. Direct snap to Reyes in the shot. Gun play action pass. Throws the deep out. Got Westmoreland. He makes a man miss at the 45 to the 50 and down to the Cedar Hill 47-yard line. Goes Peyton Westmoreland. That's a gain of 12 yards and enough for a Grand Prairie go for first down. When the clock restarts, that will probably take us to the end of the third quarter of play. In fact, it will. With the score, the Cedar Hill Longhorns 28, the Grand Prairie Gophers nothing. Cedar Hill Longhorn football on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org slash jazz. <laughs> Our set to begin the fourth period of play in Grand Prairie, Texas, here at the Gopher Bowl, the Cedar Hill Longhorns leading the Grand Prairie Gophers 28-0. The Longhorns, the number three ranked team in the state of Texas behind the Allen Eagles and Houston Katy. Undefeated on the year at 6-0, looking to go to 7-0 and leading 28-0. Grand Prairie with the ball. First down and 10 from the Cedar Hill 48. Reyes with the snap, rolls to his right. Under pressure, going to throw the ball away out of bounds down the right sideline. And it was number 47, Greg Jackson, the outside linebacker, who gave the pressure that caused Reyes to throw the ball away and make it second down and 10. Cedar Hill Cam dominating that third quarter, 14 uh, to nothing on the scoreboard. Held the ball for the majority of the third quarter. Really kind of exerted their will to open this up against Grand Prairie. And that's exactly what uh, we like to see, a positive sign. Uh, the, the offense was pretty efficient. The defense was dominant as normal. And so we just want to continue to see the guys come out with that high level of effort and intensity for the rest of the contest. On second and 10, Ray is straight back in the pocket, looking, looking. He's going to throw the ball short, and the ball's incomplete. Defended well by number 47, Greg Jackson, a little short pass that was intended for number seven, Peyton Westmoreland. Reyes had good protection there, Cam, but he couldn't find anybody open against the Longhorn secondary. Yeah, the zone coverage was uh, uh, very good that time. Everyone kept uh, their man in front of them and uh, flowed through, passed, and communicated. You could see guys pointing um, uh, to uh, where the spot was going to be and the route uh, that they were going to pass guys off to. So, a good job again by the uh, Cedar Hill defense not allowing any holes in the zone coverage. Bradshaw Middleton and another receiver split wide to the right, one to the left on third down, straight back in the pocket goes Reyes, throwing the deep out, ball's caught at midfield, but the receiver number eight, Bakari Middleton taken down immediately at the 49-yard line and a flag comes in at the end of that play. No, actually, I think Joey McGuire's complaining about the spot of the ball. They put the ball all the way up at the 49-yard line of Cedar Hill. Defense, 
Joseph Lamont is going to be flagged for an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after the play. We didn't see that at all. And interesting. a 15-yard penalty is going to move the ball all the way up from the 49-yard line of Cedar Hill up to the 34 of Cedar Hill. And Grand Prairie will have a first down. Uh, with 11.33 to go in the game, and the Longhorns leading 28 nothing. And again, uh, we're not down on the field, so it's difficult to say, but uh, it, it may be getting a little chippy out there. Reyes in the shotgun, one back behind him. Inside handoff is fake. They throw the deep out, got a man at the 30, and it's number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, who falls down there and gets an extra yard up to the 29, giving five on the catch on the left sideline on the pass from Reyes. Second down and five with 11.15 to go in the game and the clock running. And this is the first serious that threat for Grand Prairie, Cam, in quite a while. Yeah, Grand Prairie uh, having a little bit of success with those out routes that we uh, mentioned earlier. Um, Coach Bartell really sticking to that script uh, and Reyes taking advantage. Devin Lamp checks in at defensive end on second down and five from the 29. Reyes in the shotgun. Direct snap to Reyes. Straight back in the pocket. Got time throwing the in route. Got a man that's complete up at the 25-yard line and straight down to the ground goes number two, Adriel Bradshaw. That's going to be a pickup of four yards and leave Grand Prairie with a third down and still with a yard to go from the Cedar Hill 30-yard line. 10-28 to go in the game and the Longhorns leading 28 to nothing, and the defense right now came trying to hold on and preserve that shutout. And again, uh, quite interesting to see exactly what the call will be here. Third and one, obviously, four down territory here for um, the Gophers. Newsom and McGuire, the running backs on either side of Reyes, and the inside handoff is given to 22. Newsom, and he's going to get the first down up near the 22-yard line, give him three on the carry, make it first down and 10 for the Gophers as we go inside 10 minutes now, 9.55 in the clock running, left in the ball game. A Longhorns up 28-0 as we check scores. DeSoto has gone ahead of South Grand Prairie, but the score we have now is 34-31 on that game. So, again, we'll try to keep an eye on that for you. Resuming play here, first and 10 for the Gophers from the Longhorn 21. Direct snap to Reyes. He'll throw straight back in the pocket, throwing the deep out route. Got a man. Ball's tipped away beautifully. Excellent defensive coverage by Cedar Hill's number 34, Robert Reitzel. And that's textbook coverage. It was the corner route, and Reyes was trying to go to his big wide receiver, Peyton Westmoreland, and looked like he had him for a touchdown. And right still made up ground, tipped the ball away in the end zone, and for now the shutout's preserved. And he was able to tip the ball away because he turned his head around and looked for the football. What we ask those defensive backs to do on a regular basis. Longhorns leading 28-0, second down and 10 from the 21 of Cedar Hill for Grand Prairie. Reyes in the shotgun, backs on either side. Direct snap to Reyes. Handoff inside to McGuire. McGuire across the 20 is going to be taken down at the 19-yard line. Longhorns do a good job. And number 86 for the Longhorns, Devin Lamp, the 6'5", 220-pound junior defensive end. Correction, that was 56. Glenn Waters, not 86. So it was Waters, the 6'2", 250-pound defensive end who comes in and makes that tackle and leaves Grand Prairie with a third down and eight from the Cedar Hill 19-yard line. 8.45 to go in the clock running left in this one. Longhorns in control, 28-0. Trip receivers to the left, one to the right. Reyes with one back behind him on third down and eight. Direct snap to Reyes. Inside handoff to McGuire. McGuire breaks the tackle at the 15. There's a flag coming in. They're going to get Grand Prairie for a hold. It would have been a seven-yard gain, leaving them a yard short. But unfortunately, this one for Grand Prairie is coming back. A holding penalty on number 65, Eddie Rodriguez, the junior offensive lineman. And Rodriguez, that holding penalty will take the ball all the way back to the 29-yard line of Grand Prairie. 
And that's going to make it third down. And let's see what they're going to end up saying it's going to be. It's going to be third down and about 18 for a first down. Reyes sends twins left and right. Empty backfield set on third and 18. Direct snap to Reyes. Straight back in the pocket. Here comes the rush. They throw it down the middle of the field. The ball's incomplete. Intended for number 34, Ray Williams. And I tell you, Reyes took a shot. Cam, he hung in there and hung in there and waited. But by the time he got the ball across the middle to Williams, it was a little bit behind him, and that's going to bring up fourth and 18. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, uh, Reyes, he wasn't able to have that patience uh, paid off, at least with the uh, completion. And now it's fourth and forever. Uh, it'd be very difficult to convert this against such a staunch defense. Fourth down and 18. Longhorns with eight minutes to go in the game, trying to preserve, at least for now, the shutout. Bram Prairie sends trips to the left, to the wide side of the field, one to the short side of the field to the right. Reyes on fourth and 18 from the 29 will throw. Straight back in the pocket, throwing the go route, deep down the sideline. Got a man, ball incomplete. Boy, it looked like it hit the receiver number two, Adriel Bradshaw, right in his paws, but he couldn't bring it in yeah the, uh, Reyes did everything but catch the ball for the receiver unfortunately uh, he wasn't able to, to catch and I think he bobbled it uh, trying to get his feet in bounds uh, and just was not able to to uh, coordinate uh, his eyes and his hands perfect throw from Reyes and unfortunately Adriel Bradshaw couldn't bring it down and with 7.53 to go the Longhorns check in backup quarterback number 26 Garrett McGuire Josh Fleeks will be the running back Longhorns going to send twins to the right and one to the left but before we can do that there is a official timeout on the field and the officials all coming together now in the middle of the field. Second time that this has happened tonight, not real sure as to what the stoppage would be about, but it gives us down. a chance. It gives us a chance to tell you that Point of Orange, uh, excuse me, Point of Origin Design, a full service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products, a proud sponsor for Champion Sports Radio and Cedar Hill Longhorn Football. Go online at pointoforidgindesign.com for all your full-service logo creations and your wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. Resuming play now, not sure what the uh, stoppage was for, but the officials bring the teams back on the field. And it's first down and 10. Longhorns from their own 29. Garrett McGuire, the quarterback. Wide receivers, Twins to the right, one to the left. Direct snap, inside handoff to Fleeks. Fleeks trying to break a tackle, does it to 30 and gets up to the 32 around the left side. Going to pick up three, make it second down and seven, and the Longhorns now letting uh, their younger players get that experience that will be so valuable for them in the coming years. It's always good to see everybody get in. Yeah, and it's uh, maybe not even sometimes in the coming years. Uh, you never know who can go down, so uh, this could – uh, proved to be very valuable down the line. Uh, God forbid any injuries occur. Twins to the right. McGuire straight back. Throwing the deep out route. Got a man. Ball's complete up to 33. Malik Orr gets across the 40 and all the way to the 41-yard line. A pickup of 10 on the deep out route from Garrett McGuire to Josh Fleeks. And you know Garrett McGuire, he's the coach's kid, and he'll surprise you. He's not the biggest, he's not the strongest, but he's a kid that's got some skills, and he'll stand in there and wing it around for you. And that was tremendous ball placement. Fleeks, the running back behind McGuire, the quarterback. Twins to the left, direct snap to McGuire. Inside handoff to Fleeks right up the gut and Grand Prairie waiting on him. And it was number 54, Tony Cross, the senior linebacker who makes the tackle on Fleeks for no gain. And checking in for the Longhorns right now, number 27 is Chadrick Rice. The 5'9", 160-pound senior. He will be the running back behind McGuire, Kylan Ritchie, and Parker Cup with the tight end and H-back strong to the right. Twins to the left, second and 10 from the 41. Direct snap to McGuire. They throw the bubble screen out to Orr at the 40. 45-50, 45-40. And he's finally run down all the way at the 35-yard line. Malik Orr. 
on a 24-yard pass and run from Garrett McGuire. Sets the Longhorns up at the 35 of Grand Prairie as we go inside six minutes with a first down and 10 and the backup offensive unit trying to put some points on the board for the Longhorns. Twin receivers are Rambo and Orr wide to the right. Kylan Ritchie and Cup H back and tight end strong to the left. Inside handoff to Fleeks to the 30. Makes a man miss. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Breaks a tackle and he gets all the way down to the three yard line. A 32 yard run by the sophomore Josh Fleeks. And the Longhorns trying to put one more on the board here with five and a half to go in the football game. McGuire has Fleeks behind him. Longhorns go quick NASCAR. Or in Rambo wide to the right. H back Richie tied in cup strong to the left. Inside handoff to Fleeks, and he's dropped in the backfield back at the seven. And a great defensive play by number 54, Tony Cross, the linebacker, who shot through the gap. There is a flag down on the field. And it's an illegal motion or an illegal procedure penalty against Cedar Hill. And I think the Longhorns are going to get this penalty uh, declined by Grand Prairie. So it's second down now. They put the ball back on the seven-yard line. The Longhorns lose three. McGuire has Fleeks to his right, twin receivers to the left, and one Lonnie Burgess. The H-back comes wide to the right. Correction, that's number 27, Chadrick Rice, who's wide to the right. Direct snap to McGuire, throwing the ball deep down the right side. Got a man incomplete. Ah. I think that's number intended for number eight down there tyrone williams if i got the number right yep that is number eight That's tyrone correct. williams the 511 185 pound senior a uh, good throw by mcguire just a little out of williams reach and with 459 to go third down and seven from the seven for mcguire cup and Richie are the H back and the tight end strong to the right. Wide receivers either side. Fleeks the running back. Now Richie goes in motion from right to left. Direct snap to McGuire. He'll throw straight back in the pocket. Throwing the in route. Ball is incomplete. Flag comes in. It's going to be interference against number two, Adriel Bradshaw, who was all over number 11, Charleston Rambo in the end zone. Pretty easy call for the official there. I think that occurs. Yeah, and that was the identical coverage uh, that uh, Sutton was called on earlier, except he actually turned, the corner actually turned the receiver this go-round. Uh, easy call for the officials. Ball's marked inside the one, so a half yard to go. McGuire with Fleeks behind him has Richie. H back strong to the right, now motions to the left. Direct snap to McGuire, inside handoff to Fleeks, and Fleeks is going to be taken down back at the three-yard line. I lost it too. Boy, you got to hand it to, uh, to Coach Gary Bartell and, and assistant head coach Leo Clement and defensive coordinator Clint Bartell. Boy, their players don't quit playing. Now, they, these guys have uh, balled out uh, and have not given up. Really impressive. Uh, performance. Second and goal from the four. Trips to the right, one to the left. Fleeks the running back to the right of McGuire. Direct snap to Garrett McGuire. He'll throw straight back. Throws the in route. Got his man in the end zone. Charleston Rambo. Touchdown Cedar Hill Longhorns. Garrett McGuire on a four-yard touchdown pass on the quick slant route to Charleston Rambo and the Cedar Hill Longhorns extend their lead over the Grand Prairie Gophers to 34 to nothing. A yeah, very impressive uh, job of reading the defense and putting the ball right on the receiver um, did uh, young Garrett McGuire. Uh, let's see what he'll do now uh, with this snap. A new uh, field goal kicker in for Cedar Hill. We'll have to get the number for you. It's not um, Maverick Montiel, but the kick is up, and the kick is good. I don't see him on the roster, May number 95. Not, number 95, we don't have him on the roster, but we'll try to find out for you who he is. Longhorns with the successful extra point with 4.09 to go in the game had extended their lead over Grand Prairie 35 to nothing, and now it's time to start looking forward to next week as the DeSoto Eagles, who now are up on the South Grand Prairie 
Warriors 41 to 31 will be making a visit to Longhorn Stadium next Friday night. Pre-game will start at 7 p.m., kickoff at 7.30, and Cam, you said it earlier, and I think you're absolutely correct. DeSoto starting to right the ship, and, uh, of course, the Eagles uh, – Certainly remember what happened to uh, their highly touted nationally ranked team a year ago in DeSoto uh, and, on national TV and with ESPN. they never really recovered from that game last season. Uh, did not play the same after uh, that loss. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, what happens uh, next go around or next week because uh, Cedar Hill cannot afford to come out the way that they have these last two games next week when they play DeSoto. I think that's fair to say. Longhorn set to kick off. And Maverick Montiel back on to do the kickoff chores after he was given a reprieve uh, and a backup kicker was allowed to kick the last extra point. Duncanville uh, has cut Middle Othian 17-7 lead now to 17-14 to in the fourth quarter. Montiel set to kick off, hits a high end-over-end -end kick that's fair caught at the 27-yard line by number eight, Bakari Middleton. And we have 4.09 to go in this one, 35 nothing. The only suspense left here, Cam, can the Longhorns prevail uh, and keep their shutout intact, or can Grand Prairie uh, muster enough offense against the Longhorn backup defenders to get in the end zone? And, uh, that's one great uh, question. Uh, difficult. Oh, I don't know that it was uh, a great. Here. I don't know that it was a great question, but I sure appreciate you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a uh, difficult uh, job uh, ahead of Grand Prairie, uh, finishing out the season, uh, having playing a very uh, tough district. Uh, four minutes remaining in this contest, but you know, I do want to commend Grand Prairie for their great effort. On first down, Ray is straight back in the pocket, throwing the deep out. Got a man. Ball's caught at the 40. 35-30, 25-20, and dragged down at the eight-yard line. And a 64-yard pass and catch from Reyes to the wide receiver, number seven, Peyton Westmoreland, who got open deep down the left sideline. Great throw and a great catch and run afterwards. Gives Grand Prairie a first down and goal the at the nine-yard line. Perfect throw by Joe Reyes. Yeah, Reyes is extremely accurate. I mean, this is a pretty good quarterback that Grand Prairie has. And only a junior. Right, and, so they, and, and with that, obviously, uh, room to grow and time to develop. Reyes on first down, throwing the deep corner route. Ball's complete in the right corner of the end zone. And again, it's Peyton Westmoreland. Joe Reyes takes his team 72 yards in two plays for Grand Prairie's first touchdown of the evening. And with 3.28 to go, the Longhorns give up the shutout. Grand Prairie gets on the board. It's 35-6. And on for the extra point attempt, number 14, Juan Correa, out of the hold of Shadrian Williams. Correa missed a uh, field goal earlier in tonight's game, and he's back on the field now to try the extra point. The extra point is up. He shows off that strong leg, and it's good. With 3.28 to go in the game, Cedar Hill 35, Grand Prairie 7, the Cedar Hill Longhorns on the Champion Sports Radio Network. We'll be back in a moment. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 4 million brain injuries occur every year due to sports in the U.S. They also estimate that 70% of concussions go unreported. Not identifying concussions early can be devastating, especially if the athlete continues to play with symptoms. Catching hard hits fast is critical, and that's why you need the Shockbox Helmet Impact Sensor. The Shockbox is a small sensor that easily attaches to most football, lacrosse, and hockey helmets and instantly sends a signal to a smartphone on the sidelines when the player has taken a hard hit that puts them at higher risk for injury. The free app receives data from the sensor, displays information about the impact, and even walks the user through a concussion assessment. The app also launches symptom and impact data for future medical use. Visit ShockboxDFW.com to learn more about the Shockbox Impact Alert Sensor and determine if it is the right option for your child. Be warned instantly when a player has experienced
experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. ShockboxDFW.com. On a nine-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Joe Reyes to wide receiver Peyton Westmoreland, the Grand Prairie Gophers get on the scoreboard tonight with 3.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Cedar Hill leading 35-7, and Correa set to try the onside kick that we're pretty sure is forthcoming for Grand Prairie. All hands team up for Cedar Hill. Correa gets the signal from the official, and he approaches, and he booms it. Instead of the uh, onside kick, he kicks the ball deep, and the ball's going to go out of bounds. So Cedar Hill will get the ball first down and 10, and the ball will be placed at the 30-yard line for Cedar Hill. will have the ball at the 30, first down and 10, and the Longhorns and Coach Gary Bartell now getting some of his players uh, on the field for the first time tonight. Number 80, Oliver Viegas, the senior defensive end, checks in at left defensive end. Number 45, Terrell Gormany comes in at the other defensive end. McGuire remains the quarterback, twins to the left, backs on either side of Garrett. Inside handoff, first back through up to the 34-yard line, and it's number 27, Chadrick Rice. He picks up three, going to make it second down and seven, and the clock's going to continue to run. We're inside 314 and counting. Next week, the DeSoto Eagles and the Cedar Hill Longhorns will renew their old rivalry, the rivalry of Beltline. And that will be taking place at 7.30 at Longhorn Stadium. Pre-game show on Champion Sports Radio at 7. On second and seven, direct snap to McGuire. Inside handoff to Fleeks to the 35. And he gets up to the 37-yard line. Going to pick up four. And that's going to make it third down. And they're still going to be about four yards short of a first down as we go inside 2.30 to go. Both teams with three timeouts at this point. I wouldn't think that either team would take those timeouts. But we'll just have to wait and see. Checking in for the Longhorns at wide receiver is number 81, Mario Ortega. He's joined out there by number eight, wide to the left, Tyrone Williams. McGuire with Richie, the H-back strong to the left. One running back fleeks behind him on third down. They throw the out route. They got a man. Ball's complete up at the 40, up to the 40. Three up still on his feet, number eight, all the way up to the 46-yard line. Ball's taken away, but I believe that his forward progress was stopped. Or are they saying that was a fumble? Looks like they're saying the forward progress was stopped. A, a Grand Prairie player took the ball away from number eight, Tyrone the Williams, been blown dead by that at point. the 47, and the play should have been blown dead by that point. If so, it will end up being an 11-yard gain on the pass from, Mag from McGuire to Williams, and it'll give Cedar Hill a first down that will allow them to run the clock out. Here's the official call. Going to mark Williams down by forward progress at the 44-yard line. It's an 8-yard gain on the pass from McGuire to Tyrone Williams, and that'll be enough for a Cedar Hill Longhorn first down with 154 to go, and the Longhorns leading 35-7. to DeSoto in control against South Grand Prairie, leading 48-31, sets up the game next week. DeSoto and Cedar Hill, uh, Longhorns clinching a playoff berth tonight, but DeSoto and Cedar Hill uh, will be for seeding next week. Inside handoff to Rice at the 45, and he gets across to the 46, where he's brought down there by number 50, Uriel Giron, the senior linebacker. McGuire letting the clock run, looking over at the bench to uh, the offensive coaching staff, Kyle Morales giving him the signal in. Backs on either side of McGuire. Second down and eight from the 46 of Cedar Hill. They hand it inside to the first back through. That running back is number 33, Amari Hicks. 
Hicks taken down for a couple of yard loss on the play. They'll drop him back at the 44. As we go inside one minute, and the Longhorns now looking at a third down and 12 to go. Twin receivers, number 10, Jalen Sims, and number 81, Mario Ortega, both come wide to the right. Number eight, Tyrone Williams, wide to the left. Backs on either side of McGuire on third and 11. Direct snap to Garrett. Inside handoff to Fleeks. Fleeks to the 45, breaks the tackle and gets up near midfield. And that should do it with less than 25 seconds to go. The Longhorns won't have to snap it again. This one's going to end. Cam, Longhorns uh, win 35-7. Score 21 second half points. Looked a little more like themselves there in the third quarter. Yeah, and it's, uh, while it's always tough to, to have to deal with these uh, sneak games, as I like to call them, uh, the Longhorns ultimately did what you want to do. They came out, got the win, uh, started out a little bit slow, uh, revved it up here in the third quarter and closed things out in the fourth. A very impressive third quarter as they were able to score a couple touchdowns while still shutting out the opponent and the defense again with another dominant performance. Longhorns win 35-7. to When we come back, we'll wrap things up with the Point of Origin Design postgame show. We'll bring you stats from tonight's game as well as key scores from around the area. Our final score here tonight at the Gopher Bowl, Cedar Hill 35, Grand Prairie 7, Cedar Hill Longhorn football. And the Point of Origin Design postgame show will be back in a moment. This broadcast is under the direction and is copywritten by Champion Sports Radio. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of the audio stream, and any and all other use of the accounts of this broadcast without the direct written consent and permission of Champion Sports Radio is strictly prohibited. All rights are reserved by Champion Sports Radio and ChampionSportsRadio.com. This is a presentation of Champion Sports Radio, your home for championship broadcasts. There's a time and a place for everything. As you'll see, projections for the next quarter are... He shoots, he scores! Two points for team middle management. The office is not one of them. Jack, can I see you in my office? No pouting, it's your ball. Let's see what you got. But Whirly Ball is. For corporate events, team building, and private parties, Whirly Ball in Hearst and Plano is electric fun. Test your skills on the arcade games. Zip around in your Whirly Bug for a Whirly Ball competition. Or play the most affordable laser tag in the city. Learn more at whirlyball.info. In Command Broadcasting, a sports TV broadcasting and marketing company. In Command Broadcasting provides a wide array of turnkey video production and streaming services. In Command services include filming of sporting events, season highlights, school graduations, corporate infomercials, and documentaries. In Command streams your sporting event or company function over the internet live or on demand. Call 972-851-7888 to raise the energy of your next event. In Command Broadcasting, 972-851-7888. Writer Gerald Early said that when they study our civilization 2,000 years from now, there will only be three things that Americans will be known for. The Constitution, baseball, and jazz music. GDYO's Jazz Institute provides young musicians in North Texas the opportunity to learn what it means to be a jazz musician through weekly technique classes and combo rehearsals with professional jazz musicians. From the first note to the final round of applause, GDYO Jazz Institute concerts will amaze and delight both hardcore jazz cats and new fans alike. Learn more about the truly original American art form through the GDYO Jazz Institute online at gdyo.org jazz. Point of Origin Design is your one-stop shop for all your apparel, promotional, event, or team uniform needs. Point of Origin Design is a full-service design and logo creation company that offers a wide variety of imprintable and embroidered products. With competitive pricing and quality work, you can't go wrong with Point of Origin Design. It's always best to start at the right point, so visit them online at pointoforidgindesign.com. Let them help you plan your next promotional item or design your next t-shirt. That's online at pointoforidgindesign.com. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 4 million brain injuries occur every year due to sports in the U.S. They also estimate that 70% of concussions go unreported. 
Not identifying concussions early can be devastating, especially if the athlete continues to play with symptoms. Catching hard hits fast is critical, and that's why you need the Shockbox Helmet Impact Sensor. The Shockbox is a small sensor that easily attaches to most football, lacrosse, and hockey helmets and instantly sends a signal to a smartphone on the sidelines when the player has taken a hard hit that puts them at higher risk for injury. The free app receives data from the sensor, displays information about the impact, and even walks the user through a concussion assessment. The app also logs symptom and impact data for future medical use. Visit ShockboxDFW.com to learn more about the Shockbox Impact Alert Sensor and determine if it is the right option for your child. Be warned instantly when a player has a experienced a head impact that could result in a concussion. Visit ShockboxDFW.com today. ShockboxDFW.com. Back at the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas, it's the Point of Origin Design postgame show on Champion Sports Radio as we wrap up the Cedar Hill Longhorns 35-7 victory over the Grand Prairie Gophers. With the win, can the Longhorns go to 7-0? probably maintaining uh, at least their number three ranking in uh, 6A in the state of Texas. They will uh, also keep their hold on first place in District 8 6A. Uh, one of the teams that was joining them uh, in that first place role was the South Grand Prairie Warriors, uh, but it looks like South Grand Prairie will go down to defeat tonight. Uh, they trail late. Uh, in the game at DeSoto, 48-31. And, of course, uh, that sets up next week's game between Cedar Hill and the DeSoto Eagles. Uh, looks like, as you said earlier, DeSoto getting getting things back together. And, uh, yeah, DeSoto really came out against um, South Grand Prairie. You, you know they have a high uh, sense of desperation uh, because of the way they uh, DeSoto started out the season. Uh, now with Tristan Wallace, they have really started to round in the shape. And we all knew with that much talent, they couldn't uh, keep falling to the, uh, that hard luck like they had early in the season. Uh, consecutive wins uh, for the first time this year. And the offense is really humming as they scored nearly 50 points tonight against a really good district opponent. Sure, they go to uh, three and four on the year. Uh, do the DeSoto Eagles and uh, and they come in as you said uh, with back-to-back -back wins and a, and a win tonight over a very good South Grand Prairie team waiting for them next Friday night at home uh, at Longhorn Stadium will be your Cedar Hill Longhorns who defeat Grand Prairie tonight 35 to nothing Longhorns out game Grand Prairie 463 yards to 205 uh, Longhorns paced by Avery Davis going 13 out of 19 for 242 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Cam, you said while we were off air, if you, uh, you know, there were probably four or five completions that long completions that were wiped out by penalties uh, that would have put Davis over the 300 yard mark tonight. Yeah, and uh, it kind of seemed like the game plan was for Avery to stay in the pocket, uh, not uh, use his legs too much and uh, win with his arm. And you kind of like to see uh, those uh, types of advancements in the quarterback. Uh, and it's good to see, especially in a game like this one, uh, where your defense is able to uh, control things, uh, where you can uh, uh, see your quarterback grow in a game situation and uh, get the good reps and learn uh, how to read defenses and progress uh, from one receiver uh, to another throughout the offense. And I think that's what we've seen uh, throughout the season. And uh, really tonight from Avery Davis is a young quarterback that has progressed and learned how to read uh, defenses in a uh, live uh, game situation when the bullets are flying. Davis, uh, again, 242 yards passing, also chipped in 15 yards rushing on three carries. Uh, a very, very quiet night for Avery running the football. Uh, Garrett McGuire checks in uh, in the fourth quarter, goes four out of five for 80 yards. Uh, also, uh, ex uh, excuse me, four out of five for 46 yards, completing 80% of his passes, yeah. and also throws a touchdown to Charleston Rambo. On the rushing side, uh, Longhorns paced by Kagan Williams, 10 tough runs, uh, 94 yards, 9.4 on the receiving front. Uh, Buckley, Cam Buckley leads the Longhorns with two touchdown catches, four for 85. Josh Stewart chips in three for 67. 
Charleston Rambo, four for 58. Jalen Sims, three for 51. Malik Orr, two for 19. And Tyrone Williams, one for eight. Longhorns really spreading it around in the passing game. Uh, Longhorns opened up the scoring tonight uh, on a 14-yard pass with 444 to go in the first period when Avery Davis squeezed a ball into uh, Cameron Buckley and Maverick Montiel's extra point made it 7 nothing. and in the second quarter uh, Longhorns doubled up their scoring when Avery Davis had a 12-yard run his longest run of the night as we said he only carried the ball uh, five times all night one of those a 12-yard touchdown run but really it was the third quarter where Cedar Hill up 14 nothing. Cam took control Kagan Williams a 15-yard run and then Cameron Buckley uh, on a blown coverage by Grand Prairie at the end of the third quarter hauls a 57-yard pass from Avery Davis. Longhorns look more like themselves in the third quarter. Yeah, Buckley with uh, a great catch, a really good route uh, on a double move, I think, and that really uh, shook up the safety, and he just kind of blew the coverage. Uh, did not uh, see him uh, going deep, and there was no one else on the back end. And a pretty throw by Avery Davis, exactly how you teach him. Uh, don't overthrow the receiver. Uh, just threw it just right, let him run underneath it, and Buckley able to uh, jog underneath that one, catch it with his hands, looked it in, and stroll into the end zone for the 57-yard TD. For all intent and purpose, that would end it. Longhorns up 28-0 going into the fourth quarter. With 4.09 left in the game, Charleston Rambo catches a four-yard touchdown pass from backup quarterback Garrett McGuire and uh, Grand Prairie never quit playing hard all night coach Gary Bartell his team's known for that kind of effort and attitude they didn't stop playing tonight they end up uh, hitting a 64 yard pass from quarterback Joe Reyes to Peyton Westmoreland that uh, actually set them up with a, a first down and goal at the nine. And on the very next play, Peyton Westmoreland hauls in a nine-yard touchdown pass on another great throw from the quarterback, Joe Reyes. And Westmoreland, he had quite a game, eight catches, 117 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Joe Reyes and uh, Peyton Westmoreland uh, you know, really have something going. Westmoreland's a senior, but I tell you, Joe Reyes showed us something tonight, too, the junior quarterback from Grand Prairie. Well, Cam, we're, we're right in the point of the season where we hoped we would be. Longhorns are 7-0, and undefeated in district, ranked number three in the state, and here's what's left. DeSoto at home, South Grand Prairie at home, Mansfield on the road, and then we start the run for what we hope will be a fourth straight trip to the 6A state championship game. Yeah, and uh, I am looking forward to it uh, starting next week, uh, our last Friday game of the year at Longhorn Stadium. Uh, we only have two more games at Longhorn Stadium, or that's that's right. Next week and the following Thursday against South Grand Prairie. Right, and and, and so our last Friday game of the year, unless there are of course some uh, playoff games. Um, uh, since this was uh, said to be the clincher, uh, just really looking forward to it. Uh, we uh, shall see everyone. Uh, uh, next week, and I am looking forward to calling that one with you and Cody, Bill. Yeah, we'll bring Cody Krim back next week. He's out this week down at Texas A&M for the big A&M Alabama game, but he'll be joining us again next week at Longhorn Stadium. That'll wrap it up tonight from the Gopher Bowl in Grand Prairie. Thanks for listening. First to the Whirly Ball pregame show. Also staying with us for the Greater Dallas Youth Orchestra halftime show and wrapping up our evening tonight with the Point of Origin Design postgame show. The Cedar Hill Longhorn Football is a presentation of Champion Sports Radio. On Twitter at Champion Sports, Facebook.com slash Champion Sports Radio, and online at ChampionSportsRadio.com. For my broadcast partner, Cam Bolin, I'm Bill Howard, telling you that one more time tonight's final score, the Cedar Hill Longhorns 35, the Grand Prairie go for 7. Join us next Friday night, pregame at 7, kickoff at 7.30 as your Cedar Hill Longhorns take on their rivals, the DeSoto Eagles from Longhorn Stadium. Thanks for being with us tonight, everybody, and we'll see you next Friday. Good night.